you know you're going to see it from time to time, and we're already starting to see it here early on. First down and 10 nearing midfield for Tenor. They'll hand it off, and big hole up the middle this time as Geisinger, I think, maybe tripped up in that second level, Brent, and he might not have, not happy about it because I think he saw yeah, daylight in front yeah, of him. Might have had a shoestring tackle there to save a touchdown, so I didn't quite see who got the hand in there. Um, but Geisinger hit, hit that hole hard and got right through. And if he wouldn't have been stopped there, I think he was going to be able to coast on into the end zone. So nice first down run there. Give him about eight on first down. You love seeing that. If you're Tenora, you, you just do. You, you go out there, get the eight yards. Now you can go pass, run, pass, pass, run, run. So many options to do. Into Ayersville territory. Seventh play of the drive coming up. Graziani looking to throw. He's going to go left side, and it will be in and out of the hands. He was looking for Owen Ackerman on that near sideline, and really strong, tough coverage there. Lucas Fishpaul, the senior on the uh, coverage there for, to, or for, me, for Ayersville. Great coverage there. We knew the, the early play coming on with Owen Ackerman. They like to go early on to him for a big play, and that was the opportunity there. It's set up perfect on second and two. Pass goes incomplete. You have third and short here. You're able to utilize the, go back and utilize the running game. So I like the play call there by Coach Becker. Take a chance. It was a prime opportunity to do so. Let's see if they stick with that run. I have a sneaky suspicion you're going to see a run play here. It'll be third and two. Ayersville will load the box. It'll be Geisinger with it. He just lowers that shoulder. Shoulder. He'll go forward. He's going to have it up for a first down. Abe Delano will come off the bottom of that pile and. Well, that's one thing I tell you what, Joey Geisinger, man, does he run strong to the hole. Yeah, two backs there with Gus Weiler and Geisinger. Their names kind of sound alike. They have the similar running styles, both tough. You know, you know, and but Geisinger, man, he hits he hits that he's spot. He's even got the neck out. pad on the back. Yeah, he's got to rock gonna... it out. That, that's good old school right there. Who was the neck that? Pad. Number 44 from San Francisco used to wear that. Uh, Kyle Huge Tech? No, no, that was no full back of the full, day. Yeah, oh, back in the day. Yeah. We'll I'm thinking get, I like did all stop where that, you yeah. know, big old bruising <laughs> fullbacks. First down run here for, it uh, looks like, Gus Weiler, and he'll be Ooh. eluding a tackle, and he just gets smoked. Huge, that, huge hit by Grady, Brady Clark, the senior linebacker, came over and finished that one off. That was a pop. That would be a good one. <laughs> that would be a tremendous replay <laughs> for everybody but Grady, guys, Gus Weiler there. But, yeah, good chase tackle there, but ran him down on the sidelines hit and had a good tough hit. So, still not a not a uh, bad uh, run there. No. So second down and five at the 37 yard line. He'll have four receivers, two to either side, and he's looking to throw. Gonna come near sideline. It will be caught at the 30-yard line. So Owen Ackerman will have a first down catch here for Tenora at the 35-yard line. And Ackerman, again, gets a little bit of space, and that's really all he needs. He's got a little tall receiver there. He's definitely quick. So you think Tom, of Tom Rath, Tom Rath, that's what you're thinking of right there. Yeah, yeah um, no, but uh, Owen Ackerman finds a little bit of space on the sideline, just a nice, easy pass right out to him. And, you know, two quick catches for him, and, and Don, Dominic uh, Graziani has completed three passes now on this drive. 11th play of the drive, longest drive by either team here so far in this first half. Under nine minutes to go before halftime, Graziani will throw in first down. He's got an open receiver across the middle. It will be complete to Grady Gusweiler. He'll be wrapped up by Keneven. Good pass play there, just a quick slant, about as basic as you can get, but running back slides out of the backfield, runs across the middle. Makes a nice, easy catch. It's like an extended run and picks up the first down. And not only that, inside the exceptional motor car, red, or excuse me, inside the Stamball Jewelers <laughs> red zone for the first time tonight. Yeah. I went backwards there about 10 years. That's about right. I was going to say, <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> Eight and a half and rolling. First down at 10 at the 19. Fumbles the snap. Gus, uh, excuse me, Graziani will pick it up. He's going to make something of this. So he's going to have a first down run inside the 10. Tremendous recovery for Dominic Graziani. Their ball uh, snapped down at his feet, was able to pick it up pretty quickly, uh, dodge a couple tacklers in the backfield, and go forward for, looks like almost, is that solid 10 yards? Maybe it 11. 11 yards. So first down and goal now at the 8-yard line. And get inside our Stamball Jewelers red zone here tonight. And these are the opportunities, if you're Tenora, that you have to take advantage of these when you get down inside the 20, especially when you get down first and goal scenario. you got to take advantage of what's going on here. 
And then we're going to have a timeout at Ayersville. We'll take it with them. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney at law timeout. We're scoreless here. 7.56 to go before halftime. It's Ayersville and Tenora River Bowl here on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville. Josh Bush and Brent Rotten with you. Eight minutes, uh, just under eight minutes to go before halftime. And uh, for the first time tonight, we've got a team knocking on the door. Yeah, we do. Uh, inside the 10 here, looks like about the eight-yard line, first and goal for Tenora. They've utilized the passing and the run. They've utilized quarterback's feet quite a bit on this drive. So they've set it up a couple different ways, but I think we're at play 12, play 13, quite a lengthy drive here for the Rams. 13, my friend. There you go. First and goal from the eight-yard line. As Graziani, or no, this will be a direct snap to Gus Weiler in the backfield. Run a little wildcat here, and Gus Weiler pound it down towards the five-yard line. Yeah, we always definitely see that wildcat. It's something, you know, back in the day was a little new to us, but now it's common. Right. Very common. Yeah, direct, see, snap, direct to, snap to the running back. Well, really what you're saving is a handoff, a possible mistake with a handoff, sure. which at, at this level you do see it. And a couple of seconds, really, yep. to, for a play for to sure. develop. Yep, absolutely. You can, you can hit the hole a lot quicker if you are – not exchanging the ball. No, there's no doubt you can. So first, excuse me, second down and goal to five now. Right here in front of us in this end zone. Would this be the north end zone? I believe it would be. Uh, yeah, Graziani will keep it. He's uh, patient running here. He's going to cut it back. Will he get in? He's going to be across the goal line and into the end zone for a touchdown. Dominic Graziani from five yards out. And... The Tenora Rams will strike first here tonight, Brett. Yeah, no doubt. You want to talk about something, I'll go ahead and jinx for us here, as I don't think we've had a penalty so far as we're almost halfway through a quarter and a half. Um, but, yeah, pretty good drive there by Tenora. Definitely mixed in the run in the past. Graziani was the main culprit there on the drive in terms of production. I uh, was able to punch it in on a five-yard run and seal off the good play. Good drive. Get your hands ready here. I got it. Jacob Bishop with the point after, and it is right down Broadway. The Rams strike first here tonight. Tenora 7, Ayersville 0, 7.15 to go before halftime. Back after this on DCTV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field as Josh Bush and uh, Brent Rotten with you here, week number seven. Let's uh, take a look at our Mark Boats Ford scoring drive summary there for the Tenora Rams. 14 plays, 77 yards, a drive that took about six minutes off the clock. Uh, started at the end of the first quarter and uh, went all the way into the middle of the second quarter here. Ended with a five-yard touchdown run by uh, Dominic Graziani with the point after good. 7-0 Tenora with our Mark Motes Ford. Scoring drive summary. Nice drive there for uh, tomorrow. I'll tell you what, 14 plays. Yeah, lengthy drive, ate up some clock, kept the defense on the field. I understand that a lot of those defenders are on the field for offense, but, you know, kept the other team, kept Airsport from having the ball, so ate up a lot of clock, drove it right down the field methodically, but a very well put together drive. Ensuing kickoff here, Jacob Bishop will tee it up, and here we go. We'll see on this near sideline. For Ayersville, that's Jacob Miller with, excuse me, Jacob Myler with it, and a huge swarming tackle by the Tenora special teams. Yeah, great tackle there, a kick down here into the corner, and not a lot of space to get going. He, Myler was able to get it out to about the what, 22, 23 yard line, somewhere in that neighborhood. And, uh, you know, good field position for Tenora. I mean, if you're looking at it with a short kick, you're able to keep them pinned back a little bit. They're kind of carrying that momentum of that previous drive and see if they can hold it up here on defense. Ayersville looking to kind of snap that in half, get down the field and put it together a drive of their, of their selves. First and 10 at the 23 yard line. 
Shotgun formation, two backs right in front of us here. It'll be Kniven on first down. He smoked and just absolutely hit at the point of attack and a huge defensive stop there for Joey Geisinger, senior linebacker for Tenora. Hit the hole hard and uh, dropped him for a loss. Yeah, both teams really just pushing it right up the middle. Tenora had some extended, you know, luck there on their drive because they were getting seven, eight yards on some carries, but Kniven's, you know, carried the ball so far eight times for 13 yards, so um, it's been pretty steady to him in terms of eight touches, but averaging just under two yards a carry, he's getting those couple yards. He hasn't busted a big one yet. And for Ayersville, they've only had about 15 plays, yep. which is about as long as the last drive as Correct. Fishball mishandles the snap, and it will be complete oh on that near sideline. And nowhere to go is Abe Delano will be swarmed under. First man there was Ackerman, and a couple of Rams come over to finish him off. And you know you get a bad snap there, yeah. Brett, and, and it's just kind of like, what can I make out of this? And Luckily for Fishball, Abe Delano was open on that side. Yeah, he was open. Uh, not a, a great play in terms of a great recovery, but you know Delano caught the ball far beyond the line of speed, behind the line of scrimmage and wasn't able to go forward. Going to lose about three yards, I think. So it'll be a long, this is about our longest third down play in this first half so far. Definitely been stingy, minus the Tenora, the single Tenora drive. It's been pretty stingy for both teams on defense. So third and 13 from the 20. Two backs in the backfield. Fishball looking to throw. And all kinds of uh, time. Uh, no receivers open. He'll just try to tuck it under and go. He's going to get a couple of yards. Carter Radzik. Joey Geisinger in there for the Tenora defense. He, he's going to get maybe five yards on that. But Brent, uh, you know, for, for Tenora here, excuse me, get about two yards. Yeah, a I, couple. Um, I was able to get the ball going forward there, but another three and out for sure. the Tenora offense, or excuse me, for the Tenora defense. Three and out, and again, it's it's that momentum that Tenora carried with the stop on the previous drive, then the lengthy drive now, quick stop here. They're going to be getting the ball back with enough time to have another lengthy drive. It should have good field position. Correct. Courtway with a much better punt this time. It'll be fielded and for fair caught right at midfield by Tenora's Trenton DeLarber. So. The Tenora offense will go back to work here as they've got well, we've got our first penalty mark. You've I did you jinxed it. it. I, I tried not to. We got a personal foul. Looks like a, well, we've got offsetting. Off for, yep. So a pair of uh, just some cuddles. extracurriculars. Yeah, a couple cuddles between a couple guys. <laughs> Tends to happen. It does happen. So. Those fouls will offset, and the Tenor offense will look to go back to work here. Brent, plenty of time, four, over four and a half minutes to go. They've got all three timeouts, not that you necessarily sure. need it, but you've got a great field position starting at midfield. Yeah, half the field, you know, to work with here, and then you go. 50's half. <laughs> That's about right. Okay, I got it. And, and you go with, you know, five solid minutes. They're going to be able to do whatever they want on offense um, in terms of running the football. Sure. You stick with that. They've had some success passing the ball. We'll see how mixed up they keep it. Again, I think you're looking heavily at the quarterback play here in Graziani. Um, he's definitely highly involved, as any quarterback would be, but is on his feet as well. And we're on the jet sweep on first down. It will get a few yards. Actually, just thrown forward yeah. there. Turned that into seven, eight yards. Carter Gilliam with the first down jet sweep there for Tenora. And that's something a little bit different. I mean, you're still running the football, Brent, but sure. it, you, you kind of change it up a little bit, give him a different look at it, and it uh, works out there for a gain of about seven for, for Carter Gilliam. And you you know you see that just a different look. It's a run play. It, it's a it's a very similar run play to a lot of their offense. But you get it to the receiver Gilliam. He's able to get the ball and pick up a solid seven eight yards. Set yourself up in second and short. It'll be a run for Gus Weiler right up the middle. He's going to be right about at the first down marker at the forty before he's thrown back. And Noah Bodai in there for the pilot defense. And are they going to move the sticks? They will. As a first down run there, he needed about two and a half, three yards. He got two and a half, three yards. Yeah, and, and it was a simple simple inside run there, um, something you'll see repeatedly throughout the night, and needed three yards, maybe a short three, a long two, ended up picking it up right at the sticks. That just moves the chains, sets up now first down and 10, and you're, again, moving the ball and on the move. You know, play clock at 10. We've seen that about every play here yeah, from Tora, not in do, any hurry. They very much let it run down for sure. 
clock spinning three and a half minutes before halftime. Graziani will throw a quick bubble screen on first down. It'll be hauled in, but nowhere to go for Caden Radzik on that far sideline. And well, that was defended extremely well by the Tenor, or excuse me, by the Earsville secondary. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of Caden Radzik early on here. Uh, I believe that's his first target, maybe second target. Um, was able to wrap that cat catch up and not get too much in terms of yardage, but definitely a player they're going to try to get involved more and more. Three-minute mark before halftime here. Week number seven of high school football. Josh Bush and Brent Rotten with you from Craig McCord Field at Ayersville. It's the 48th River Bowl. Good to have you along here tonight. Second and nine for this to our offense. Dominic Graziani in shotgun formation. And we got a penalty. Brent, you yes, definitely. It's two now. A false start coming here against Tenora. The back him up five. Well, i going to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> you jinxed it. Yeah, I know. We went, we went, what, about 12? We went about nine, almost 20 minutes a game clock with yeah. no penalties. We've had two. Well, I think, I think, uh, just lucky coaches probably won't rewatch this because I could be in some trouble <laughs> with Coach Tenora's staff over there. Definitely threw a wrinkle in, and uh, now we're having flags all around. The Ayersville marching band warming up over here in the corner behind us. Graziani back to pass, and he'll just tuck it under and go. He's got some grass, and it'll be closed in and tackled uh, back to about the original line of scrimmage. Nice pursuit there from the pilot defense. Yeah, good pick up there. Uh, dropped back. I don't necessarily know if that was a design run, but dropped back quick, seemed to check one one route, and then took off running. Um, you know, you get yourself into a little bit more of a manageable third down here after picking up six. Yeah, third and eight, much, much more manageable, and uh, Tenora's going to burn a timeout. We'll take it with him. Kristen Stanton, a trivia law timeout. It's Tenora 7, Ayersville 0. Minute 45 to go before halftime. Back after this on DC TV Sports. Bush and Brett Rod with you here tonight. Uh, again, a uh, pretty good matchup here so far in this first half. Make sure you stick around at halftime tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Strady Center for the Arts. A lot of great performances coming up here in the next uh, month to two months and leading into the holidays. And our very own oh, Jeff and Sarah, yeah. boss man, who, by the way, happy 22nd anniversary. That's to, right. To Jeff and Sarah. We, we have no idea that. how she's done it, but she's done it. And, Maybe and, 22 years? And they're going to spend half and they're going to spend half time together. Oh, well, that's from beautiful. a couple of days ago. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, out of the timeout here for uh, Tenora, third down and 8 at the Ayersville 38 yard line. They'd love to pick this one up here and keep this drive alive. Graziani back to pass. He's got good coverage uh, downfield. He's going for it all. He's got a almost intercepted pass. Lucas Fishball, I think, probably had the best shot of anybody catching that one down here near, towards the end zone as he was looking for Jacob Bishop. Yeah, a good opportunity that, opportunity, to, opportunity there to take a deep uh, shot. Um, good looking ball just over through the receiver. Brings up fourth now, down fourth and fourth is and eight. Is that a penalty marker? It is. It's going to go against Tenora. It's against Tenora. See if they decline. It's interesting here. This is a yeah. This is a tough. This is an interesting call for Ayersville if they take the penalty. So if you back them up here, you you still have third down. Right. You decline it. You got fourth down at. Got a chop block against Ayersville. Now that would be, if I'm not wrong, that might be a 15 yard. You might want to take that one. Yeah, I would think, you're definitely going to that. You know, flips it to that side of the 50. That's enormous, or close to at least. Or it's a 10-yard penalty, excuse me. So a 10-yard penalty still back out near midfield, Brett. Yep. And, uh, again, you're kind of in that situation. Do you do you put them in fourth down situation or do you give them third and long? And haven't seen a ton of big plays here on either side of the football tonight, so we'll see what happens here. Yeah, third and 20, I think we're at. I mean, I, I think it's a great call for 
Eric's going to take that penalty and push him back. Empty backfield. Graziani will just uh, slip it over the middle with the screen to Gus Weiler. And it will be defended well by the Ayersville defense once again. It'll have a maybe five or six yards out there. And I think maybe we're going to get another time out here. Ayersville's going to burn one. Yeah, it looks like definitely it's going to be fourth and. 13, yep, and they're going to use a timeout. So they'll burn up. We'll keep it here. A hey, Kristen Stanton attorney of law timeout. Uh, Brent, minute 28 to go here. Uh, obviously, Ayersville's thinking uh, when people get the ball back here, they're yeah. probably going to be pinned deep. Um, if, in the, you know, I don't know, just to go for it, do they punt? Right. Kind of in that situation where uh could go either way. Balancing the clock, balancing your timeouts, balancing, you know, Ayers was going to receive the ball in the second half. It's sure. we're going to try to take an, you know, an extra shot, knowing they're not going to immediately get the ball to start the second half. So, a lot to consider here on fourth and thirteen. Um, in terms would of imagine a punt, you would think, but you know we haven't seen uh, with a buck twenty-eight, a timeout left. Yeah, I mean, one would Ayers suspect mean, a punt here. Ayersville has only been able to run the, or he's only gotten. 17 plays in this yeah, first half. Yeah, and very limited yardage. So, you know, it, it's been one of those games you expect to come in. Low scoring, lots of running of the football. Both teams have been pretty disciplined. We've had a couple pen penalties here as of late. But, um, you know, it's been good play on both sides. Bishop will punt this away. He's got two men back for Ayersville. And they'll let it roll inside the, the 10-yard line. So, a nice punt there from uh, Jacob Bishop to... Pin the pilots back. They'll have a minute 18 to go here in this uh, second quarter, and they'll start at their own 10 yard line. And uh, we'll see what they can dial up here. They're going to have uh, one timeout to work with Brent, so uh, clock is not going to be their friend here. We'll see what uh, what Coach uh, Andrew Mickey decides to go with here and uh, try to dial together for this here's the offense. Yeah, with a timeout left at a buck 18, a lengthy drive isn't going to be a play. So I mean. I would fall and expect them to stick to the game plan and run the football and see where it leads. Um, I but think maybe Tenor would play off a little we'll bit. See. Maybe you get a, maybe you can open up a hole. And they're going to throw a fishbowl on first down. He's going to go to the uh, sideline and just overshoots his intended target. Okay, he was looking for Dylan Hinkle. And I think that one kind of sailed out of the hand of Lucas Fishball. Yeah, bit. a little bit. Only three-man rush there, so not a ton of pressure. And uh, Fishball just dropped back, had an idea of a hot route there, a quick hitter, and, uh, you know, let it fly and just overthrew the receiver. So second down and 10 at their own 10-yard line out throwing yeah. here. you got to be careful. And if you're, uh, you're not going to burn off too much clock. You, you have two timeouts left. Sure. So even run plays here, they could stop the clock and force the ball back in with decent field position. And even then, you just try to block the punt. Yeah, yep. So they'll give it to Kneven on second down, and he'll kind of run into his own player there. Yeah, that's a nice nice run for him. So he had a really good run there. Found hit, hit the to the left side, found that hole, and... Was able to get a solid one, about eight yards there. So, most productive run of the night. It was a big time to have a run like that. So, it'll be third down and two at the 18 yard line. And Tenor's going to use the timeout, as expected, Brent. Yeah. Chris, Kristen Stanton, attorney at law, timeout. We'll take it with him. 47 seconds before halftime. Tenor seven, Ayersville zero. Back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field. Josh Bush, Brent Rowell with you, the DC TV Sports crew out here today. And a uh, beautiful, That's a great beautiful night. Beautiful night here. We, we have been so lucky so far. Yeah. We've had nothing and, but. And you and I remember to wear pants this yes. week, so uh, we're, I mean, we're not going to be too chilly. Definitely here. a little chilly probably coming in, but that, if that's the worst we got, we're all right. No rain, no, <laughs> last no week, snow, last no week sleet. It was, last week it was so nice. We had shorts on, and oh, then we it cooled off quickly. Then we weren't feeling good. It All got right. cold. <laughs> Third down and two here for Ayersville. They've got to convert here, or you think Tenora's going to take a quick timeout. They're going to throw it, and it just goes at the feet of the uh, intended receiver as Garrett McConnell came out of the backfield. But 
all kinds of pressure there from the Tenora defense. And i got to be honest with you, Brent, that incomplete pass stops the clock. Yeah, it's almost a free timeout. Fishball, smart play. Um, immediately saw that there was a, a blitz incoming and everything was covered up quick. Was not going to make make a bad play turnover here sure. this deep in the zone. Just got rid of the football. Live to see another play. If you can get a good clean punt off here, you can at least push them back with, you know, inside 40 seconds and only one timeout. You can play a, a little bit against that. Is a little bit better than taking a chance there for Fish Paul. A turnover down here is pretty much a touchdown. Ethan Cordaway will stand at his four-yard line, and he'll boot it away. That was almost blocked right here in front of us. It'll be fair caught at the 45-yard line by Tenora. And, well, Brent, uh, you got one timeout left. Yep. He had a short field in about 40 seconds. We've seen Graziani able to throw those yeah, long passes. He had a couple. Of, he had a pair of them to Ackerman last week. Yeah, I think right, right here, you know, he's already in position where he, he can get that ball quite easily to the end zone. So, um, yeah, I think they could work intermediate here for a couple plays, but if they can get that ball knocked inside the 30, inside the 20, um, they're going to be able to take a couple shots at the end zone. And Jacob Bishop's got a pretty nice leg yeah, on Yeah, and, and that's another point, too. You pick up about another 20. 20 or so yards, and you could be 25 yards. You could be in range to kick a good field goal. So Graziani will stand back by himself. He's got an empty backfield. He's going to look for it all on first down. He's got a wide open receiver on the far sideline, and it'll be in and out of his hands. He had found some room over there. He was looking for Caden Radzik, and he found a little bit of space in behind those uh, DBs, Brent, and uh, not able to haul that one in. Good look, good coverage, though. A well-prepared defense there. Didn't get a lot of space for Radzik to work. Was able to get a little bit of a step, but ball overthrown just a little bit. So, you know, I full-on expect the next player or two to see similar sure. type plays. I mean, they've got the ball here. They're going to take chances. And you know you're, you're, you're booting it away at yep. halftime. Yep, exactly right. 33 seconds to go here. Second down at 10 at the ears of 45. Again, an empty backfield. Graziani back to pass. No rush coming at him. It will go underneath this time, and it will be out of bounds, complete to Radzik on that far sideline. And right about at the sixth, but I think he's going to have enough for a first down. Yeah, definitely. Good, and he stepped out of bounds. Good catch by Radzik, and, you know, gets out of bounds. I think they're looking at about the 34, 35-yard line. Um, first down, still 28 seconds, still one timeout in place. So they can still utilize the middle of the field. They don't have to stick to the sidelines. They're definitely going too early on here as they're going to try to conserve that timeout. But they have to go in the middle of the field. Um, they're able to do so still. Empty backfield, five receivers for Graziani, and he's back to throw. He'll come over to the near sideline. It'll be complete at the 25. Can he get out of bounds? And he will. He will get out of bounds. It was a kind of a delayed call there. Bra sure. Brandon Rostai with the... Reception for Tenora, and it'll be another first down for the Rams at the 24-yard line. Right about 10 yards there in the last two plays, 11 and 10, just chunking off enough yardage to keep her moving. 18 seconds to go, 34, so it'll be still a little pretty. Or excuse me, it's at the 24. So 41-ish yards on the punt. Oh, yeah, field goal attempt from there. Yeah, 23, 32. Yeah, yep, 41. Spawn. I think I want to get a little closer than that. And yeah, penalty marker flies. It's going to be a killer. False start on the Tenora offense. So that'll back him up five yards. Is it right? Got a little discussion going on here over on the Ayersville sideline, it looks like. Is there a five-second runoff? Uh, or is that just the NFL? <laughs> <laughs> Ten-second NFL. Ten, Ten seconds, that's right. Ten-second runoff? Yeah. No, I, I think that's pretty much all football, but I don't think it's going to happen here. So we... Well, they're doing something with the clock. Did they add a second? Looks like they may have. They might have added a second. From Maybe 17 the clock. to 18, yeah. The clock might have started prematurely. Yep, put that second back on that rolled off on the snap. So they'll put it back in the backfield now with Graziani, and he's going to look for the end zone, and it'll be in the corner for Ackerman, and it'll be in and out of his hands. Defended well there by Really good-looking ball. Fishball. Great coverage by Fishball. Ackerman, he's definitely the deep threat target. He's a pretty tall receiver. And Fishball was able to stick to him and get a hand up in there, which deflected the pass. 
So it'll be second down now for Tenor. They've still got 12 seconds to work with here on the, on the uh, clock. And a timeout. They'll empty the backfield again for Graziani. As he's back to pass, they're going to bring pressure this time. He's got to run for his life. He'll go forward for a little bit. And that will keep the clock running for. And they'll call a timeout. Two seconds. With two seconds left. So, got to imagine they're just going to maybe set it up for one more play yep. here. So, he's Kristen Stanton, attorney at law timeout. We'll keep it here for the timeout here, Brent. And. That's been a nice first half here by both of these teams. I think especially defensively, uh, we've seen extremely well-prepared uh, yeah. teams on the defensive side of the football. Tremendous. Both teams are stopping the run, and they've shown that tonight. You see how they've gotten to where they have with Tenora holding that 3-3 three and three record, but you know, up against their losses. I think by the end of the year, their record is going to look quite a bit different. They are definitely built to stop the run. Ayersville, same. Um, you know, coming in with the 5-1 and one record, they've had a lot of success because of their ability on defense to stop the run and not give up big chunk plays. Both teams have done so tonight. Tenora had the one lengthy drive. Outside of that, you know, it's moved along pretty quickly and, and with not a lot of excitement as we have two seconds here and what will likely be a... It's a field goal attempt. A long field goal. 45-yard field goal attempt. It's going to hit us. <laughs> yes, it's coming right towards us here. From the right hash, this will be Jacob Bishop. And the kick will be blocked. That's a live football. And the Tenora will pick it up and go down. We'll go to halftime here. Tremendous block. A Delano with the block there for Ayersville. But Tenora, your leader here tonight in the 48th edition of the River Bowl. Halftime is... Uh, Brought to you by Midwest Community Federal Credit Union. Josh Bush and Brett Rotten with you here. Uh, your thoughts on that first half? Um, obviously, offensively, um, only seven to nothing. But yep. Tenora, uh, the edge offensively in that first half. Yeah, definitely. 126 yards for Tenora and sitting on 66 yards of total offense for Ayersville. So this was a defensive struggle, and the one lengthy Tenora drive has been really the difference in, in the game. Um, in terms of getting after the football and stopping the run, we've said it repeatedly. Both teams have done a very good job tonight. Tenor, you know, jumps out with a 7 nothing lead here in the second quarter, and they're ready to rock and roll with Ayers. will get the ball in the second half. I think we're going to end up with a pretty pretty darn good game. So, uh, defensively. Defensive um, struggle. <laughs> yeah. You can't say it enough about the preparation no. uh, that they've done here. You knew what the – obviously, you know the identity of, sure. the, of the opponent here tonight. Um, but – you know, for these teams to be as prepared as they are and then execute uh, the, the attack and, and the tackling. That's a huge part of the game in, in a game like this. Yeah, it really is. And, and you see you see a lot of seniors on the defensive side especially and juniors on the entire upper class on both both defenses. They're good athletes. That they definitely fundamentally sound on the defensive side of the ball. So they've been able to, uh, to get after the, the ball carriers, and that's really been the story. Each team's had a big pass play here and there. Um, but, you know, like we said, outside of that one lengthy drive, it's not been a ton of first downs, not a ton of yardage. Halftime, our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union Halftime Show will roll on. Tenora leads at 7 to nothing. When we come back, we'll sit down and we'll chat about uh, the Strady Center for the Arts here on DC TV Sports. My name is Jeff Tackett, and this is my beautiful wife, Sarah Tackett. We are standing here on the stage of the Strady Center for the Arts. And uh, Sarah and I are the co-executive directors here. And we just wanted to bring some information to you regarding some of the events we have come to you this, this year. That's right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank our board of directors here at the Strady Center for the Arts. Our umbrella organization, you may know, is called the Defiance Community Cultural Council. And it was founded in 2006 uh, by the beloved late Professor yeah. Richard Strady, a um, wonderful professor of music from the college. He formed the DCCC in 2006. 
and upon his um, sad passing in 2010, the board of directors at that time decided to name the beautiful building after him. So that's why it's called the Strady Center for the Arts. We'd like to thank all of our board of directors for all the support that they give um, all year long. Great upstanding citizens um, from our community that are a very great advisory board and leadership board for Jeff and I and our staff here. We also want to thank the many sponsors um, some major organizations throughout our community that are helping to sponsor the 23-24 performance season. And our next event is this Sunday. Tell it's us coming up this Sunday. Uh, we have our first classical event of the year. And it's coming up this Sunday at 3 o'clock. It's going to be the Tower Brass Quintet. Um, when we were looking at the season, when we started putting things together, Sarah and I both come from the entertainment world for the past four years. We've been traveling and singing and performing around the country. And we just thought, how can we elevate all of our performances, whether it be here, we have some performances at the Tenora Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. Some at the parks. We have Triangle some at the Park, parks Kingsbury as well. Park. So we come up with a sort of a slogan, and it's called Entertainment on a Whole New Level. And we hope that the community can uh, enjoy some of the variety of events that we have, the variety of uh, groups that we have coming in. Mm -hmm. But this Sunday at 3 o'clock, we have the um, Tower, Tower Brass Quintet, Quintet. Yes. which is our first classical series. And then following that, next weekend, on Saturday, October the 7th, we have our first children's event, or young audience event, that we call it. Mm -hmm. And a gentleman coming in to do some magician um, comedy, uh, a nice presentation for the young audience. His name is The Great Kaplan, and I think yes. everybody will enjoy that. He's very entertaining. Mm. How many of you are Beatles fans? We have someone who does a spot-on rendition of John, John Lennon. Lennon. And yeah. he sounds like him. He's got the round glasses like him. But <laughs> we want to invite you to come and enjoy Drew Harrison on October 14th, 7 o'clock, right here at the Strady. Um, and it's an intimate concert with Drew. He'll talk, help tell stories yeah. um, about the life and times of John Lennon and share some of his music. So I really think you'll enjoy that. And then coming up last year when we were at the OAPN, which is the Ohio Arts Professional Network, we were there in Toledo. And there were so many phenomenal artists that were there to, to select. And one of the artists that we, we found there was a gentleman actually from Germany. Um, he actually plays a three-neck guitar. One of his guitars One of his is guitars three is necks, a three-neck yes. guitar. And he plays it at the same time to a lot of the, the songs that you'll, that you'll recognize, a lot of popular songs. He is phenomenal. If there's yeah. one event that you don't want to miss, that's Luca Stragonola. And that is coming up on November 2nd. Uh, November 2nd. And that'll be at 7 o'clock. But be sure um, to be here for that one as well. Um, you can go onto our uh, website, defiancearts.org, mm -hmm. and you can sign up uh, for the tickets. You can purchase tickets right there on the website. Mm -hmm. Just go to the events page, and it'll give you a full listing of all of our events. Very simple. If you do have any questions, you can always call the office here. Either myself or Sarah or our, Katie, uh, Katie Polly mm -hmm. will be here to help. That phone number is 419 7843401 or you can always come down and visit us here at the Strady Center on 319 Wayne Avenue. That's right. Um, tickets for our events are available at defiancearts.org, but some of the events do not require tickets. For example, right. um, the, the Great, Great Kaplan, Kaplan on October 7th that we mentioned, that's a free community event. Mm -hmm. And then the annual Messiah concert, uh, the annual Messiah, Handel's Messiah, yeah. is coming up. December the 3rd, always held at St. John's uh, United Church of Christ near mm -hmm. the campus of Defiance College. That is also free and open to the public. A beautiful, uh, just a classic rendition of Handel's Messiah, mm -hmm. conducted by Defiance's own Dr. Andrew yep. Schultz, coming back from California to um, direct that event. Beautiful event, local vocalists, yep. um, some regional musicians that'll be a part of that. And again, there's no ticket for that. I do wanna back up though, Jeff. Messiah is on December 3rd, but there, is, there are two events in November that we yeah. haven't talked about yet. And the, the, 
The next event that we are going to have at the Tenor Performing Arts Center, I mentioned earlier, we host some events here at the Strady Center. We have about 200 seats here at the Strady Center. Mm -hmm. And then we go to Tenor Performing Arts Center, they have close to 800 seats there. So some of our bigger artists will have at that event. And our next event that we have coming there is a gentleman that used to play for a group called the Stray Cats. You might remember the song, I'm going to rock this town, rock it inside out. Right. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Popular but he was the in bass the 90s. singer, bass player. Yeah. He plays um, that big upright bass yeah. and sings and really a fabulous yeah. entertainer. Lee Rocker is going to be at Tenor Performer Arts Center. If you again go to our website, you can find that. All the tickets are available. Those are selected seats that you can purchase for all of the events at Tenora. Here at the Strady, it's all open seating. We right. have a very intimate setting here. So you just have to purchase a ticket and that'll get you in and you it's first come, first serve on who gets what seat. Right. But at the Tenora Performing Arts Center, you can actually pick your seat and there's different tier levels for the seat pricing at the, all of those events. Absolutely. So Lee Rocker from the Stray Cats will be uh, a Strady Center event mm -hmm. held at the Tenora Performing Arts Center on November 11th. Yes. So jump out to defianceArts.org to get that, those tickets. Yeah. Now there's one concert that's extra special and near and dear to my heart and our board of directors said, well you're going to sing sometime Tackett, aren't you? And we said, oh gosh, okay, love to. So Jeff and I, some of our favorite music that we have performed together over the years is Christmas music. Yeah. So we are uh, doing a Christmas concert here with our band here in the Strady Center for the Arts on Thursday, November 3rd. 30th. Mm -hmm. um, so come and join us and enjoy some Christmas music on the front edge of the holiday season. Yeah. And then our, our very last event uh, of the season this year um, is going to be back at the Tenor Performing Arts Center. Yes. We just released the tickets, but um, there was a song that when Sarah and I got married, uh, which and I surprised 22 her. 22 years ago. 22 years ago. September today, 29th. Tonight. Yes. And uh, today is our anniversary, so thank you very much for celebrating <laughs> with us. But uh, I sang a, a song. football game to yeah. celebrate our anniversary. <laughs> anyway. I, I sang a song to Sarah at our, our, our wedding called One More Day, and it's by the phenomenal country group called Diamond Rio. Yes, the actual Diamond Rio is going to be here in Defiance, Ohio at the Tenor Performer Arts Center for their Christmas special. Yep, and December. that's coming up December the 16th. 16th. And those tickets just got announced, I, th I believe two the weeks 16th ago. Of September. And we're yep. already close to 60% sold out. So if you want tickets for any of those events, all of the, all of the events, even through next year here at the Strady, are already available. The Tenora events that are coming up, you have Lee Rocker, that's available now. You have Diamond Rio, right that's available now. Yeah. So you can go, be sure to go in and buy your tickets soon because that will, those will definitely be some Probably sold out show, out. sold right. out Absolutely. shows. But um, we're excited about what we're able to bring to Defiance, Ohio. We love our community. We We've been, been here over 20 years now. Again, our anniversary, we've um, got four beautiful children that all grew up here in Defiance, Ohio. Um, but I do have one event that's sort of special that's coming next May. That's okay. going to be the final end of the season. The final end of the season um, performance, and that is the Mighty Oak Ridge Boys is coming to Defiance. If you want to be sure to be on that first announcement for ticket sales, you have to be on our email list. So again, go to defianceArts.org, sign up for our email list. That's where we announce all of the tickets are available first. To, at our Tenor Performing Arts Center. Concerts. That's definitely going to sell out and it's going to sell out quickly. Right. So if you want to know when those tickets are announced, be sure to be on that email list. We'll announce it right around 90 days prior to the concert, but you will get notified on your email if you're on our email list. So Absolutely. you don't want to miss that. Right, and we're fortunate because we scheduled this concert with them and then not long after they announced it's their 50th anniversary farewell yeah. tour. So we're actually one of their last yes. events that they'll ever perform together here at Defiance, Ohio. And what a blessing. Yes. So thanks for being with us right now and listening to what all we'd like to share about the Strady Center for the Arts. We're honored to get to bring high quality entertainment to our community. Yeah. Be sure to enjoy the second half and a big thank you to Josh and Brent for all the hard work they're doing with DCTV Sports. Thank you everybody and God bless. Thanks.
Welcome back to Ayersville High School tonight. 7-0 Tenora at halftime in this River Bowl. Josh Bush and Brent Rott with you here tonight. And, uh, well, the uh, Ayersville Pilot Marching Band on the field. Let's set it down there. And uh, they're getting ready for their final selection here tonight. So let's tune in and get a little uh, action tonight from the Ayersville Marching Band. Ayersville and uh, Tenora marching bands will be out on the field here together as they're going to perform a little bit of unity here tonight and uh, their final selection. And, you know, you always love seeing this. Uh, two schools, again, rivalry. For but sure. Parents work together. The kids yep. play against each other in all these different sports. And, right. you know, for marching bands, I saw both of these bands at the uh, Band Spectacular Defiance uh, a few weeks ago. And we'll send it down there now for the Tenora and Ayersville marching bands. Wow, <laughs> what a great performance there. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it would have been stop, drop, and roll for me, yeah, buddy. Yeah, there's no doubt watching the old, the, watching the majorette not, throw three. Not one, lit, not lit two. Batons. Uh, I would have burnt something. Yeah, there would have been bodily injury <laughs> of some kind, for sure. Well, uh, Brent, uh, we got a few minutes here before halftime. Let's uh, take a look at... Uh, not a lot of scoring in that first half, but uh, uh, the one lone score in that first half was a Dominic Graziani five-yard touchdown run, 7.15 to go in that second quarter as Tenora took their 7 nothing lead. Uh, Stat-wise, uh, what are we looking at here in that first half? For Tenora, Grady Gusweiler on the ground at 21 yards rushing, Joey Geisinger with 13, Dominic Graziani pacing the team with 35 yards. Um, receiving for... Tenora. Caden Radzik has two catches for 12 yards. Owen Ackerman has two catches for 15 yards. Jacob Bishop, one catch, five yards. Grady Gusweiler, two catches, 18 yards. And Brady Rostai, one catch, 10 yards. Dom Graziani, as we said, to go along with the rushing touchdown and the yards on the ground. He's thrown for 60 yards total in the game. Total offense uh, for Tenora. 76 yards rushing uh, and 50 yards through the air. So 126 yards, but they do have the single touchdown. So a uh, really offensively dominated by uh, Tenora in that first half. And well, as we uh, here at halftime, again, 7 nothing Tenora on our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show. Brennan looking at a couple of scores uh, from around uh, Northwest yeah, Ohio have, here tonight. And uh, there's Defiance, no doubt we have some. Defiance was 
Uh, big test tonight for Bulldogs yeah. at Elida. Number one defense Elida has in the Western Buckeye League. Trails 7-6 and a half. There you go. Time. And number one defense defines me. has a great defense, too. I think ranking in the top three or four in the WBL. So 7-6 as we see it right now. Elida leads defiance. Um, How about this NWOAL? The big the, one. The biggest matchup in Northwest Ohio, uh, at least close to home anyway. Uh, Patrick Henry and Liberty Center. You know, you and I know from our radio days, that was a big matchup no matter what the records were. Both those teams come in 6-0, 3-0 in the conference. Uh, Liberty Center, number two in Division Five, Region right. 18, computer point-wise. Patrick Henry, num uh, number one, Division Seven, Region 26. Could you have expected this score? Um, I would have said 21-20 at half would have made some sense because there would be 41 points. There is 41 points. Liberty Center has them all. 41 to nothing wow. at half. That just uh, kind of blows my mind a yeah, little bit. Yeah, definitely was a game that a lot of people in the area were looking forward to and watching and you know paying attention to. We've been keeping up with it as this game's went on and uh, just one score after another for Liberty Center. Northwest Conference, uh, we talked about this in the pregame, or you and I talked about it before we went on the air. The top four teams in that league, they've kind of kicked around the bottom four yeah, they uh, have. last few weeks. Uh, but right now, uh, Columbus Grove, Lipsick, Crestview, Bluffton matching yeah. up tonight. Yeah, Columbus Grove leading slightly over Lipsick per our last update, 14 to 7. So, you know, you got the big games, definitely big games going all along there. And that's one that every year you get, you know, Lipsick and Columbus Grove get together. That's a good game. Um, Any other scores stand out to you tonight? I mean, looking at, we got a couple close games. We've got Salina and Bath in the WBL, a, a matchup of two good teams. Salina leading by six at half. Arlington and Macomb. Um, good football on both sides there, definitely with 21 up. How about this, a winless Ottawa Glamour yeah, team? Yeah, Van Wert, who seemed to have skidded quite a bit since the win over Defiant. So 14 apiece, Ottawa Glandorf and Van Wert. That's weird. Big time. Big time. So we talked a little bit about computer points, obviously, getting towards the end of the season. That's a topic of conversation that's going to be spread around a little bit. Some teams in our area, Defiance Division Three, Region 10, they're sitting at number seven. Remind you, 16 get in now. Yep. Um, so they are right now, of course, trailing uh, at halftime. Um, elsewhere in uh, Van Wert was number five in Region 14. They've been struggling as of late. Uh, Wasion 10, Bryan 11, Napoleon 13 in that region. Uh, Division 5, Region 18, we said, mentioned Liberty Center, they're number two. Archibald 4, uh, Liberty Benton 7. Uh, Division 6, Region 22, that's where Tenora's at there. 13, Bluffton, who we saw earlier this year, they're the number one. Right. Columbus Grove at 7. Uh, Paulding. Paulding's had a, quietly 15. had a really good year. Um, Division 7, Region 26, that's where you'll find Ayersville in at number 9 right now. Yep. Uh, Patrick Henry's the one, Macomb three, Antwerp five, Lipsick six, Pandora Gilboa seven, LCC's in that mixture at 12. Um, and then a region that doesn't necessarily uh, pertain to us, but it's always a fun one to watch. One of the, the best. The MAC region, as always. we like to call it. But Mar Marion Local, number one, Division seven, Region 26. Minster at six. You got St. Henry in there yeah. as well. And um, we, we are always uh, blessed each year to have good local football. We have it at all levels. And... You know, you get down, we talk about some of those Division Seven teams. They're very good football teams. That says Division Seven. you think small school, it might be, but they play big-time football down there. So, yeah. And especially you, in the MAC. You get down in the MAC, it's, it's, if, if you're a football fan of any kind, always good to check out some of those uh, high-level games. When you get Minsters, when you get St. Henry's, when you get Marion Locals and Coldwaters all playing. Uh, and, 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 no, and nothing tops the 50-50 at, right, Mar at Marion Local and Coldwater. Which is like an online 50-50 now. It reaches like, I don't know, eighty, ninety thousand dollars 90000 It's crazy. Ridiculous. We've each won multiple times. So. We we'll have? go after it. No, we haven't. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll I was going to say we went fifty-fifty on the fifty-fifty. <laughs> yeah, and you we did. did, and you kept a hundred of the fifty-fifty. <laughs> if that's the case, <laughs> I missed something there. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, have to get in on it this year for sure. Well, uh, make sure you join us next Friday night. Uh, we'll be back at Defiance uh, for the Bulldogs, their final home game. We talked about this. You, you and I were talking about this. A uh, really home top heavy, at top the heavy. Yeah. yeah, and and so their final home game. They've. Uh, been on the road last week and this week. Uh, they'll be back home next Friday against Bath. Uh, homecoming at Defiance next Friday, and uh, that's where we'll head is uh, Defiance. Again, you know, I, I mentioned this. Uh, we were talking about this in the office. Gary Reese, one of my office mm -hmm. mates, at, uh, big Defiance sure. supporter. And, uh, you know, if Defiance could win out, obviously that would give a loss to Salina. Right. Uh, you need somebody else to beat Salina, but a win yep. out would at least guarantee a, a share of the league title right. for, for Defiance. Uh, they got to take care of business tonight, though. They got some really strong teams here to close it out. You're, and, and shockingly, 
good teams in Salina and Elida, teams that haven't necessarily been at the top of the right. WBL for the last couple of years. And we talk about even Beth, who we have going next week, where they're in a tight game right now and it, against Salina. So, I mean, you know, it seems like the parity in the WBL is huge. I was going to say, when were we getting that word? It's huge. And, and they've, won, <laughs> they've went back and forth. Um, all year in the WBL, so it's been it's been fun to watch. You kind of look every week, and you're like, Bath, they looked good last week. Elida, they looked good sure. last few weeks. And then you you know you get to see a chance to see them up front. Van Wert, that was one of the best games we've ever mm. watched. They've skidded ever since beating Defiance. Well, and you look at the Green Meadows Conference, the two teams that were that were here uh, tonight. Uh, Antwerp, obviously, Ayersville, both three and zero. Right. Um, yep. Tenor leading here. They're at two and one. So that would. If it, if it plays out like this, now you've got another one-loss team. Uh, Paulding's a one-loss team. Wayne Trace, a, a one-loss team in the league. So yep. you're at that point now where you're going to start to see who can knock off Antwerp in, in the closing uh, few weeks. Good luck. Yeah, I mean they're 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 doing some things. So obviously for for you know when you talk to coaches, the number one thing they want to do they want to go out and perform well in their league. Obviously you, you perform well in your league. You want to win the league title. Sure. You want to get to the second, the second season, if you will, get yep. into the playoffs and, we, and and survive to week number eleven. But this is a big game here. This second half, we'll we'll see. Uh, you know, for for Ayersville, they could stay undefeated in the GMC, yep. or will they drop to one and, and be a game back of Antwerp like everybody yeah, else? The, the winner of this game has is in the driver's seat to you know run into Antwerp, and if they could win that game, take the conference title. So um, that's always one of the early goals is to win the league. They can't take that away from you and you win the league you forever forever have won the league so you know it's something that both of these teams especially are looking hard at tonight's game to you know get a key into that big game against Antwerp second half underway here Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show wraps up and the opening kickoff for Ayersville will be taken across the midfield a huge return there from Jacob Myler tremendous return if we can Get, getting up the field they're finding the sideline and just being able to go um, that's a, really one of the first big plays where uh, they had a nice completion in the first half for 25 yards but huge return there in terms of chunk play setting you up this is a big one so Jacob Myler will put the Earsville Pilots in great field position here at the 44 of Tenora to open up the second half of play here DC TV Sports good to have you along 48th River Bowl a first down run will be Torin Kenevan, and he'll go. Oh, check that. It's McConnell with the carry on first down. McConnell, that change of pace back. We talk about it. talked about him last time he got the carry. He got 10 yards, five on this one. Uh, come right out second half going, going to the big play guy and picking up a chunk there. Yeah, that, that field position to kick you off is you talk about taking momentum away coming out of halftime. You get the ball, and then you get a return like that. Ayersville trying to. Yeah. Snowball it together here. Halftime adjustments. We'll see who did it better here in the second half. 7 nothing to Nora on second down. They'll give it second man through his can even this time, and he'll spin forward. He's going to have a first down for the Pilots, and a nice run there. And hit initially Brent, broke a tackle, spun forward, and he's going to get just enough to the first down stick. Yeah, good run there by Kenevan. He's had some a couple good runs tonight, but he's been pretty consistent getting positive yardage. The numbers don't exactly jump out as being you know off the charts, but... You know, Torin can even, one thing about him, doesn't fumble the football, always holds on to the football, sure. always finds a way to go forward. So positive yards on plays. <laughs> That's what we're going for here. So a first down for Ayersville. They only had three first downs. I had them down for three first downs in the yeah, first half. They've correct. already got one here yep. in their second play of the second half. Another first down run here for the Pilots. There's another pretty big run. Hey, McConnell with the carry right up the gut. Radzik on the stop for the Rams. And a nice four-yard run on first down. It keeps you, again, on Ahead schedule. The sticks, uh, on schedule. You know, they marched it down inside the 30 already, haven't even ran two minutes off the clock, and it's just been steady, good return, steady run, steady run, steady run. Let's see if they keep it up. At some point here, Fishball's going to drop the ball back, and he's going to look to make a big-time pass. Inside the 30 of Tenora here. Second down, and there it is. A quick screen to the far sideline, room to run, and it'll be hit. Oh, maybe he'll, he was hit as he was going out of bounds. Right at the sticks, but I think he definitely got the first down there. So nice snag there for Abe Delano. Good enough for a pilot's first down. Again, we mentioned this briefly, three first downs in the first half, Brent, two already here on this first yep. drive. It's definitely been adjustments made, and and by the Ayersville offense, and you're seeing them here early. 
Um, we'll see what kind of adjustments can be made on the Tenora side defensively here as Ayersville's pushing it right down the field in, into scoring range. Second man through. I believe that's Keneven. The first down run inside the 20. They'll go into our Stamball Jewelers red zone for the first time here in this second half. And I was wrong again. It was McConnell with the run. 44-24. looks very yellow. similar up here, doesn't it? <laughs> that The yellow on light blue is a little bit tough to see at times. There's no doubt that is true. So already into the red zone here for the pilot offense. And a, again, they'll run it. Nothing fancy here. Second man through. Looks like maybe back to the line of scrimmage. That time it was Kadeven. Yeah, it looks like he got maybe maybe a yard or so, maybe two. Brings up third and short. Big play here. Sitting just inside the red zone on third down and two. So got a lot of options you can go to here in terms of getting the quarterback outside of the pocket, rolling out, and possibly seeing if Fishball can use his legs and or make a pass. Or it can just be you know, straight up the middle football like they've been running a lot of this game and having some success doing so. Under nine minutes to go third quarter. Third down and two for the pilot offense, and they'll keep it on the ground. Looks like they're going to have enough for a first down. Yep. I believe that was Keneven with the carry. And I tell you what, Keneven is, is the you need two yards, you need three yards, you need four yards, and it needs to be tough. You just give the ball to him. He's going to get that yard. It seems to do it on every play when they need it. So another first down for Ayersville. Again, inside our Stamball Jewelers red zone at the 13-yard line now. Obviously, you can get a first down at the three, Brent. Yep, uh, you can get one more here. There's no doubt. Two backs in the backfield again. And it'll be the second man through. It's like they've run the same play <laughs> about three or four times. Can even bottle up that time and... I think Tenora's starting to figure out what Ayersville's trying to do here. Yeah, I, I, you said same exact play, and it's close. I mean, it may not be exactly spot on, spot on, but it's right there. Um, they're running the ball. They love running between the tackles. And, you know, when you got a strong kid like Keneven, McConnell's a little more of a quick back, but he's also a big, strong kid. So they love utilizing their, their size and their speed and running the ball right up the middle. Ninth play of the drive will be their longest offensive series of the night for Ayersville, second down and eight at the 11, fumbles the snap and Fishpaul makes a smart decision there. He's just gonna fall on it. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. You gotta cover that up, uh, live to see another play and that's what happened there with Lucas Fishpaul. Not the best snap, ball hit his hands, fell to the ground, jumped right on it. Back to the 15 yard line. So it'll be a big third down and long now for this Ayersville offense. The play comes in from the sideline. Neither of these teams really much of pace. Um, no, I mean, it's it's pretty steady. Steady with the play clock running down almost every play, it yeah, feels like. 8-10 yeah. on the play clock every down. Yep, definitely. There's no doubt. I mean, that's exactly how both teams play very similar on the on that side of the football. Five seconds on the play clock here for Fishball. Down to three, down to two. He gets a snap off, looking to throw. He's going to go to the end zone, and it will be well defended, but a great that catch in the corner of the end zone, and it's a touchdown, a Premier Bank touchdown. And that was Ray Wolfram. Third, big third catch of the day for Ray Wolfram. This one was a big time touchdown. Snagging that ball in the, in the front end of the end zone. So great looking pass there by Fish Paul and bringing it in was Wolfram with a 15 yard touchdown. So the Ayersville Pilots will get their first score of the night, a Premier Bank touchdown. 15 yard pass from Lucas Fish Paul to Ray Wolfram and the Point after a try. No, they're going to go. Looks like they're going to go for two. Delano in the quarterback here. spot here. He'll just tuck it under and go. He's going to burst, bust it to the outside, and he'll have the two-point conversion. That's an enormous play there. So a two-point conversion. I'll tell you what. If you're Andrew Mickey, you roll yeah. the dice there, yep. and um, it pays off for you. Yeah, Coach Mickey looks like definitely looked like he had that play sitting there waiting to be used. Uh, Direct snap to Abe Delano, maybe one of his better athletes there on offense, and Delano just cuts to the outside, and nobody around walked right into the end zone for an easy two points and an 8-7 to seven lead. Ayersville takes the lead, 8-7, to 6.35 to go third quarter. We're back after this on DC TV Sports.
Welcome back to Ayersville High School. The Pilots will get a touchdown. Uh, Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. That drive went 10 plays, 44 yards in 5 minutes and 10 seconds. Capped off by a 15-yard touchdown pass from Lucas Fishpaul to uh, Ray Wolfram. Okay. Abe Delano, a two-point yeah, conversion I mean, run, and the uh, Pilots take an 8-7 lead. Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. You talk about an offense in the first half that really didn't do anything of no and just comes out the first possession here, drives it right down the field, um, completely changes the outlook of the game. It's like Delano will have it teed up here. He's going to do a little kicking as well. Oh, that's right. Down to the corner, and it'll go out of bounds. So a penalty in the ensuing kickoff. So Tenora will... It's the 35, isn't it? I think that's the 35. Uh, being out for a couple of years, we kind of had to come back to some rule adjustments that we weren't used to. Not exactly that every time, but yeah. <laughs> so, right. decent. Uh, nonetheless, Tenor will have a decent uh, starting field position. We'll see what they can do here on their first uh, series uh, offensively in this second half. Yeah, and for Tenor, you need to rebound here after playing tremendously defensively in the first half, uh, having a, a small lead, a one-possession lead. Um, you know, not a lot of room for air. Obviously, air is what comes out, drives right down the field. You want to counteract that right away. Um, if it's a story similar to the first half flipped for the Ayersville side, you know, Tenora was, had their score and immediately got a quick stop and got the ball back. So we'll right. see if Ayersville is looking to duplicate what Tenora did in the first half here and get a quick three and out, get that ball back, maybe start applying some pressure in the second half. Well, the penalty was taken. They're going to make them re-kick it, so it'll go back to the 35-yard line. And... Delano will tee it up again, and it'll be a high end over end kick right down Broadway. It'll be returnable across the 20. This is DeLarber with it across the 30, 35, and out about three yards. <laughs> a net of about three. Yeah, so. I mean, I still got three yards. It's 30, what, about 38 yard line there. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, good call. Three yards. Three yards is three yards. That's huge. So, the Tenor offense will come out of the field for the first time here in the second half. Again, led by their quarterback, Dominic Graziani. And well, you've got to see what they can do to answer here. It's an offensive series out of Ayersville that we haven't seen all night here tonight. Right. And it, well done uh, to, to make the adjustment and come out here striking first in the uh, second half. There's no doubt we'll see how Ayersville's defense is able to maintain that momentum and continue it going forward. They'll fake the end around. Second man through. It will be Gus Weiler with it, just dragging defenders out near midfield. He's going to have enough for a first down. And now they... Ran that jet sweep a couple of times in the first half, Brent. That time they fake the jet sweep, give it to uh, Gus Weiler, and he makes a couple of guys miss, drags a defender, yeah. gets the first down. Yeah, 12 yards there, good strong run. Just uh, looks a little bit like a man possessed there as he hit the hole, got through. Uh, knocked a couple of guys down on his way to finding near the sidelines and picking up solid 12 yards. Right at the midfield stripe for the Tenora offense. And we had... Hardly any offense in the first half. and <laughs> Yeah, already more uh, is, this half. One, is it, one more point this half. Is it going to be different? Graziani is going to throw on first down, and he'll have a receiver that will be caught on the uh, sideline there by Braden Rastai. And it's like he's going to have about eight yards on the first down catch. And a nice route run there by Rastai and a nice throw by Graziani. Yeah, second catch for Braden Rastai. So... Um, you know, he's been looked at a couple times and has been a little sneaky target for him here, and that's a great play on first down to get you into second and short. So they'll bring it to the line. Second down and a short two yards. They'll bring Rastai in motion, and they'll give it to Gus Weiler again. He's going to have the first down, and when he hits the hole, hits the defender, and then just kind of falls, falls forward. forward. But you know what? That's four, turning in four or five yards after contact. We call that what? Yak. And uh, yeah, every time it seems like he's get the ball, he's going forward. He doesn't waste any space, any steps going backwards. It's positive yards. Down to the 37-yard line of Ayersville. So another first down here for Tenora. Their second and three plays on this drive. As the breeze is picking up here Just behind us. Just a little bit. And defiant, or excuse me, uh, Ayersville defense wrapped up there by Keneven. His uh, Gus Weiler just had nowhere to go. He's going to lose about two yards, Brent. And, you know, and give credit there to the Ayersville defense. They, I think, I feel like they knew what was yeah, coming there. And sniffed, uh, sniffed that out pretty quick out, outside of the huddle. And, 
you know, had had a bunch of guys in the front, up in the box there, just fill up the holes and nowhere to go for Gus Weiler. Dropped for a quick two-yard loss, his first negative run of the day. So just talking about how he tends to get positive yards, positive yards, boom, Ayersville. And he changes that penalties. script right away, yeah. Doing a little jinxing for sure. Second and 12 now, Graziani will look to throw. Got protection, pocket collapses, he'll take it down and run, and he'll be pursued and thrown down. Got back to about the original line of scrimmage. And Brady Clark, man, he is. He is a, he is a load, Brady Clark is. Uh, you talk about big hitter. You talk about big guy that's got some speed. Yep. You talk about a guy that's fundamentally sound and, and makes plays. You just said everything I was going to say, the speed and then that tackle. Yeah. He wrapped well <laughs> and, and, and took Graziani down, and it forces a third down and, and 11 here. Yeah, there's and there's no doubt. And not slipping up there and letting Graziani break it for a big uh, run is huge. Gets him into third down and an obvious passing play. So they'll go five receivers. They'll empty the backfield here for Graziani on third and 11. He's back to pass. He's got time. Now pressured. Going to come back across the middle. It'll go in and out of the hands of his intended target. Looks like he was looking for Jacob Bishop, who was coming across the middle there. It'll fall incomplete. Definitely had a, a little bit of a step there, Bishop did, so led him a little bit too much, but found the hands, fell incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth and 11, fourth and long. The 41-yard line, you figure a punt here would... Perhaps pin the pilots back deep. Yeah, there's no doubt they're going to try to kick a corner here. They were the ones last week. I believe they had a tremendous punt last yeah. week. Had one of the best punts that we've ever seen. So Jacob Bishop will try to do this. He'll be standing just across midfield. He'll get the punt away. It'll we'll go to the corner and we'll see. It'll go into the end zone and it'll be a touchback. So he had the right idea. Right just idea, a, a just a little, little too much. A little, uh, little too strong on the boot. For sure. Got in about a yard deep into the end zone. And, you know, sometimes if you can fall that just short, the, the bounce might direct towards, you know, back towards in the field of play, and you can pin them deep. But ball hopped in the end zone on the fly there, so automatic touchback. Great analysis there. Yeah, you got I it. I appreciate man. you. Just want you to know that. I appreciate you too. <laughs> First down and 10 for Ayersville here at their own 20-yard line. They'll go right back to work here. Two backs in the backfield. Exactly the same look we look. saw on their first drive, and it'll be can even with it on first down. And nice defensive play there from Tenora shooting in to uh, make the tackle was Braden Rostai, who's having himself a game here tonight. Yeah, he is, on, both on offense and defense. A couple catches, and uh, we set his name on tackle quite a bit. So can even get in the, getting that positive yards as he does. Uh, it's almost the clock control, you know, in such a, a short spread game, a one-point game. Um, you're seeing clock control already. I think both these coaches, both these coaching staffs know this is going to be a low-scoring game. It may be the first team to two scores ends up winning it. So you can definitely see some. the run is going to continue for sure. A little misdirection, Delano with it, and the Tenora defensive players swarm him under. We do have a penalty marker, and we'll... It's in the area of holding, Brent. Yeah, it's right there around the line of scrimmage, thrown from behind. So oh, we're gonna get a chop block on to, on uh, Ayersville. That's a big one. I believe that's a ten yarder, a as ten -yarder. we found in the yep. first half. Yes, correct. Yeah, <laughs> we haven't seen too many flags. We've had two chop blocks, though. <laughs> that's you know, true story. You know, sometimes you get games littered with holding flags here and there, and. We've been lucky tonight. The pace has been great with, you know, flow for both teams. They have to be pretty impressed with their team's performance in terms of being disciplined. Sure. Limited turnovers, very few penalties. We have not seen a turnover right. yet here tonight. One turnover on downs. Yeah, I mean, that's... But that's not... That's not a turnover. No. It's as close as we've been. That, you're right. A lot of punts, though. So then I'll back Ayersville up all the way down to their 11-yard line. Right here in front of us in this north end zone. Same package, two backs in the backfield. Delano will have it on the run, and he'll be hit and dropped in the backfield. Trying to see who Tremendous got through there. 72. 72 from Tenora, and that was Andrew Richardson, a 6'4", 225-pound senior. Yeah, big boy there got right through and wrapped up Delano. Delano's a big kid, too. They're both really good-sized kids. You Can't can argue with that one. 6'4", 225, that's, that's a big kid. 
So third down and 18 yeah, now third at the and long 12. Here, you know you're going to see a pass play here unless they're deep enough that Fishpaw, if they look to just run a draw or something, get a little bit of space. Um, you don't want to make a mistake definitely this close to the end zone for sure. So Fishpaw back to pass, looking to get rid of it quick. Pressure coming. He'll float it down the left hash, and it'll fall incomplete. He was looking for, looks like he was looking for Ray Wolfram. Yeah, good-looking pass. Got a little too much over the top. Uh, Ray Wolfram, the closing speed there, got a good amount of burst, almost caught up to it, and was able to get a hand on it. So the Ayersville punt team will come onto the field here, and Ethan Cordaway will stand be right at the front of the end zone. What do you think we're going to see on Blitz here? You think they're going to come after this one? It would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? I would think so. You would want to try to block this as best as you could. Yeah, if there if there's a time to go after it, it would be this one right here. They have two guys back as normal. Cordaway will boot this one away. Just a low end over end kick, and it'll be fair caught by Trenton DeLarber at the Ayersville 44-yard line. And that's where the Tenor offense will take over short field here for the the uh, Rams. Yeah, and they've had a couple, a lot of drives here early on in the first half, and now this one, you know, where they're getting into tremendous field position. So closing out drives is going to be big. They've done it one time tonight, and they need to stretch a couple, uh, string a couple first downs together. You know, and, and like we said earlier, I, I have a funny feeling as we're sticking under two minutes to go in the third quarter, this might be a... First team that scores twice sure. might have this game. I mean, these are big possessions, but one year ago over at Ayersville, or excuse me, at Tenora, twenty-two to six was yeah, the Ayersville there you win. Go. So first down for Graziani and the Rams offense at the Ayersville forty-four yard line. They tried to end around. Looked like Caden Radzik, but I'll tell you what, very well read by that uh, Ayersville defense. Yeah, we we haven't talked a ton. I mean, we've certainly talked about their defense but man they have played tremendously tonight in terms of stopping that run the numbers don't always show it but second half here the adjustments that have been made have been phenomenal so it'll be a loss of two back to the 46 yard line second day and 12 five receivers set Graziani pressured he'll tuck it down and go he's across the 45 40 he'll be hit and dropped down near the 35-yard line. Going to be short of the first down, Brent, but nice heads-up play there by Graziani. And I don't, it almost looked like a designed run, but uh, I think it was just kind of created that based off the, the coverage downfield by the Ayersville defensive backs. Yeah, it definitely did. A drop back looking to pass, and it, one thing Dominic Graziani does very well is he'll run through his progressions very quickly. If he doesn't see space, he trusts his legs and his ability to run, and he did so there and got him into third and short, third and manageable. Third and three now at the 37-yard line, looking to pass again. Pocket holds, so now he's pressured. He's going to tuck it down and run. He's got the first down and more inside the 30 at the 25. He'll slide down, and he'll have a first down for Tenora. And he says, listen, if we can't throw the ball, yeah. I'm going to just tuck it down and do it myself. It's the, it's It's been the extra added weapon that it's been there, but it's been very strong of late, his ability to put it down and get chunk yardage. Ten That's yards already there. Already tonight, his third carry of 10 or more yards. He has a carry of nine. And sticking on the night with 56 rushing yards, he's the leading rusher in the game. So we had one touchdown in the first half. We're knocking on the door of maybe our second one here already in the second half. Yep. First and 10 for Tenor at the 27-yard line. Second man through, and it will be Gus Weiler, I believe. Goes inside the 25. That'll wrap yeah. up the quarter. Oh, just already. like that. Man, I didn't even realize we were that close to it. <laughs> no, same. So Ayersville gets uh, on the board here in this third quarter. They lead it now 8-7, to seven, fourth quarter next here on DCTV Sports. to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville, 48th River Bowl as Ayersville takes a 8-7 lead into this fourth quarter. Josh Bush and Brent Rotten with you here on DC TV Sports. Glad to have you along tonight. And now, well, Brent, uh, you know, that first half, uh, 
not a lot of offense. Some adjustments <laughs> made there in the in the halftime locker room, obviously. And now we're seeing uh, both of these teams kind of uh, exerting themselves a little bit here in the second half. You know, if you like defense, you've come to the right place. We've had tremendous defense on both sides tonight. The adjustments that were made at halftime, Ayersville definitely had a plan getting that ball. They knew exactly what they were going to do play-by-play -play, driving that ball down the field. So um, they put that drive together, and we're, we're looking at how big of a play was that Abe Delano two-point conversion. Sure. You know, that gave them the lead, and although Tenora's starting to put a little bit of a drive together here, you know, Ayersville's been able to was really control that entire third quarter. So well, the fourth quarter's going to be exciting. Like we said, if you like defense, you came to the right place. But if you like a close game, you're here too. So... Graziani will fake the handoff and throw. It'll be complete to Radzik. And he'll go inside our Stamball Jewelers red zone down to the 11-yard line. It'll be good enough for a Ram first down, their third one of this, excuse me, second one of this drive. A couple of score updates for you. Defiance now uh, on top of Elada 12 to 7. Ottawa Glander Van Wert tied at 21. Fairview. A one-point lead over Edgerton, 22-21. There 22 we go, to 21, fighting Doug Rakes this is. Looking, I believe, for their first win of the season. Get him, Doug. From the red zone, Graziano will keep it on first down. He's got all kinds of daylight. He'll make a move at the five and go into the end zone. It's a touchdown for Tenora. Let's make sure there's no laundry on the field. It'll be an 11-yard touchdown run for Dominic Graziani, and it will be his second yard, or excuse me, his second touchdown run of the night. And the penalty marker is out there. So hold on. Hold your horses, everybody. And it's a hold it's against. Knock that play right off. So a good-looking uh, run negated by a hold call, and there's maybe a reason why it was such a good-looking run right there. <laughs> and he had a lot of grass on the. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of grass. <laughs> a lot of open space on the that was natural grass. That been, it might have been a tackle, not a hold. <laughs> So they'll stay in the Stamball Jewelers red zone back at the, I believe, 17-yard line now. So it'll be first down and a little bit longer now, about 16 yards. They'll get a first down, I think, at about the one. I believe you're right, Brent. Graziani looking to throw. He'll go across the... Oh, almost a picked. dangerous throw. Yeah, heavy, heavy coverage by Ayersville there. They had four or five, you know powder blue jerseys over looked like Owen Ackerman but decent looking ball uh, I don't know if decision wise was the best yeah. decision to make there and got a little bit lucky for Dominic and, and that's one of the things you talk about with quarterbacks when you're flushed out of the pocket yeah. he's running to his left yep he's got to come back across and it's then not he's an easy throw and now he's throwing back into the middle of uh, triple coverage yeah. it's it's you don't tend to put a lot on those and you got to be spot on with a lot of a lot of timing on those so they'll run it here with Gus Weiler, he'll go down inside the 10, the nine yard line. So big there on second down to pick up chunk yardage there for Gus Weiler. It kind of opens up your playbook a little bit here being third and eight. You can get a first down again on the one yard line. So very good play call there and a heck of a run by Grady Gus Weiler. Ninth play of this drive. A third down and nine, excuse me, third down and eight at the nine yard line. Rams trailing by one, eight to seven here, fourth quarter. Graziani looking to throw. He's going to go left side. He's got an open receiver. It'll be caught at the Tremendous five. tackle. And a huge tackle there for Ayersville, I believe. Zero. That was uh, Jacob Myler on the... Tremendous tackle. Braden Rostai hauled that one in. He had space over there, Brent. For and, sure uh, did. And just like that, Myler closed the gap quickly and was able to wrap him up and knock him down. Just a, a tremendous tackle. And, you know, I, Ayers, or Tenora will have an option here to kick, which, you know, that's, well, that's not every team do. has that. So they're definitely going to line this up, trail him by one. Jacob Bishop will be on. It's spotted at the 12, so it'll be a 22-yard field goal attempt. Boot is up, and it will be no good. No good. Nice just thing. left. Wow. Yeah, you and had to line was, up on that was, side of the field. It's a tough kick. It's not it, the easiest it, kick. We're in the north end zone. Yep. That's in the south end zone. I couldn't tell at yeah, first from if it here, went. From here, it, it's not easy. It was going to be a matter of did it go in or out. For sure. And It was right on the line and, and then went just outside the, you know, the post there. So missed. Um, big opportunity there, but a big play for Ayersville. You get the quick Defense tackle. holds. Defense holds. Ben, but don't break. Myler with the great tackle. 
they force a tough kick over on that hash and, you know, get the ball back to pin deep. But they got the ball back in the fourth quarter, holding on to a lead. So great overall stance there for the Ayersville defense. 9.48 to go in the ball game. Ayersville with a one-point lead, 8-7. to seven, And they'll have it first down and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Two backs in the backfield. We've seen this look out of the Ayersville offense the entire second half in a Big run here. I believe that's Kneven. He'll go out across the 30. There's, big, there's the first big time big run by Kneven. Oh, Excuse no, that's, me, it was Delano. Was Delano. Yep. Another big guy. Yeah, and another big one. <laughs> there's no doubt about that. Delano already with a wrap on that knee. We saw him kind of injured yes, in that Bluffton we, we game. We definitely did. He's going to get up slow, and he's going to come off to the side. And you know if he's coming off to the side that uh, he's not feeling might have tweaked that leg a little bit, had some help from some teammates to get up, but it'll be enough for a – Ayersville first down out to the 33-yard line. Delano's definitely an X-factor on offense. You know, you, you just try to do everything you can to get the ball in his hands. He seems to do positive things and get yardage, hit that two-point conversion, big time first down there. So first down now for the Ayersville offense, second man through. Looks like it'll be McConnell with the run. And I was wrong again. It's yeah, Kneven. You, you the 24 and the 44. I'm hey, Josh, you're doing great. I got the four part of it right. <laughs> so a gain of one. And now time starts to become a factor here yeah. for the uh, Tedora Rams because it inside nine minutes. We talked about the pace here. Neither of these teams are quick nope. <laughs> to get to the line of scrimmage. I mean, the play clock's already down at 10 now. Yeah, you, you talk about if Ayrshire's able to put together two or three first downs, they're going to run this thing down in, inside a couple minutes to go. So a big second down here. Second man through, just falls forward for a nice gain. And that was... It's Kneven, looks like a gain of about four. So a big third down here. I think probably as big of a third down for the Ayersville yeah. offense. This is, is a bigger third down for defense. this Tenor defense. 100%. You know, that's a great call. Third and six. They need to get off the field here, give their offense an opportunity to, to put a drive together here as the clock spins near the eight-minute mark. Yeah, and it's, you know, the clock has been virtually nonstop. We've had some incompletions, but it's been a ton of run plays, so clock's just been going and going as we've rolled along here. And it's not even 9 o'clock yet. That's crazy. So there will be a little misdirection of the backfield. Second man through, and the Tenora defense will hold here. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing more. Kneven will come off the pile with the football, but you know, Brent, give credit there to the Tenor defense. They knew they needed to make a stop, and they, I think you could kind of sense that you're going to get a run there. Yeah, you stack up for the run. Uh, Coach Mickey, you know, it, we're not going to say that's playing conservative. I think that's playing smart football there. I think he knows with the way the pace of the game is going, him running there, and even in a punt situation, rolling it inside seven minutes, he's in position now where they may legitimately have to make one more stop, and they could possibly get the ball back to end this game. So, we know with how the clock has been moving, possessions are limited here for sure. And they will punt this one away, a big booming punt this time, and it'll be caught by the Larber, and he'll be hit immediately. Great coverage by good, the... Very good coverage. The Arizona. ball and the defender arrived at about the same time. The Larber was able to fall forward and get three or four yards there, but um, tremendous coverage by the special teams unit of the Pilots. So under seven minutes to play here now in this ball game, and the Tenor offense trailing by a single point here will have it at their own 33-yard line. 6.59 to go. Josh Bush, Brent Rotten with you here. Week seven of the high school football season, 48th River Bowl. In a five-receiver set, empty backfield for Graziani. It's a design run. He'll go right up the middle. He'll have it across the 35, and a nice open field tackle there for Ayersville. And I believe you're going to say Torin can even with the stop there. One of those senior linebackers. There is no doubt, and we have. Well, you know, Tenora's been setting that up. They've gone yeah. empty backfield, and they've thrown, and they've yep. thrown, and they've thrown, and you could kind of see at some point you empty that backfield out, and uh, when you're throwing like that all the time, it's going to drop your For defenders sure. back. Your, your box is going to empty out, and. You know, Saw kudos. an opportunity to get some positive yards on first down. Kudos there to the Yearsville defense to recover and make the stop. Second down run here. It'll be Geisinger, I believe, with it. And he'll fall forward. He's going to have enough for a 
to the right first, at the down. first down marker. Yeah, big strong run by Joey Geisinger, who we haven't said his name a whole lot here since early on in the game, but he's racked up his fifth carry now as he sits just under 20 yards, but none bigger than that six he just got there. So to give the Rams a first down at the 44-yard line. Both teams Clock. still holding on to all three timeouts, too. I know we they came into play in the first half, and they're definitely going to come into play here in the second half. Halfway home, fourth quarter, 8-7, Ayersville. Tenora looking to put a drive through here, uh -oh. fumbles the snap, and they'll just, oh, uh, this is going to be our. I think Ayersville might have got that ball. And it is our first turnover of the night, and it will be a fumbled snap, and nothing bigger than that right there, and Unfortunately, we got a injured pilot. Trying to see who the number is that's down. I think it's the young man that got the football. Looks like he might be dealing with a cramp here. Yep, they're trying to stretch that calf out, so that's a good sign, obviously. Always a good sign. I mean, you don't want to Nobody see anybody wants to hurt, cramp up, but, <laughs> but a, a cramp is, is a cramp. So get the old pickle juice that you Coach Mickey they're saying right now. A little pickle juice little on the side. Pickle juice on the sideline, toughen it up, kid. Let's get out there and play football. So, well, Brent, we've we've seen we've talked about discipline and, and playing clean football here yep. tonight. First turnover, First turnover. Huge. doesn't come until the five fifty two mark of our third quarter. And I'm an opportune time always for a turnover. There's never a good time for a turnover, but, you know, had just gotten the first down there and we're looking to string some momentum together and at least get down into field goal range again. And that fell short for Tenora. So they're going to have to send their defensive unit out here, and you're going to see a heavy dose of run coming from Ayersville. But Ayersville's going to have an opportunity here to clean off some clock and possibly get Tenora to start using some timeouts. So a couple first downs for the Pilots. And it was Garrett McConnell. And he's been freshman there, right? Tough yep. kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real tough. So good hard runner for him. And, again, ball hawking there on defense to get that. So 41-yard line. Of Tenora, this is where the Ayersville offensive drive will come here. And, you know, again, if they could string a couple of first downs together here, Brent, we're, we're, you know you're going to see a heavy dose of run. Yep. Tenora's going to stack, looks like seven in the box. Big time. And they'll give it to Kenevan on first down. He'll fall forward across the 40. Not a lot there, but clock starts to spin. It, it's, not, it's not the prettiest offense in the world, but I tell you what, in terms of what they need to do, the pilot offense knows exactly what to do to hang around in this game, make the big play when it happens. Their defense helps them out, and they have held onto the football, have not turned it over, have maintained possession, tremendously played game on both sides, but Ayersville here in the second half has been fun to watch. And again, just taking their time as they figure 40 seconds between plays, mm -hmm. you can chunk off a lot of time, play clock at 10. Fishpaul's going to wait for it to get down to five, and he'll take the snap now, and... He calls for it, and it'll be Kenevan again. And you know, the Tenora defense knew what was coming there with Kenevan. Yep. Heavy dose of Torin Kenevan in the second half. There, ten carries already, rolling through about a quarter and a half. And he'll fall forward back to the line of scrimmage. I don't know if he gained maybe a yard. And again, clock continues to spin. We're under five minutes to play here in the ball game. Ayersville with a one-point lead thanks to that two-point conversion. Andrew Mickey rolls the dice. It yep, pays off. Definitely does. And now huge play for both teams, but huge play here for Tenora to try to do anything to get this ball back. And the snap will come. They'll give it to Kenevan again. He's going to fall forward. He's going to be close to the Very first down close. marker. Will he have enough? He is gonna he's going to be real about close. He's going to be about a yard or two shy of that first down. So... Solid pickup of six there, six and a half maybe. He's had a hard, far, hard, far way to 47 yards here. Hasn't hit the 50 yard uh, yet, but 20 carries already. Mm -hmm. So can even has been the has been the primary back and two, three, four yards here, two, three, four yards there. Well, this right could now, be the, this could be the play of the game right here. Four down yeah, and two. You need two yards right here. I mean, you got to think it's going to go to 44. And we'll see what the. Set looks like Ayersville's going to get to the – now they're going to go Delano in at quarterback, and they'll just give it to him. He's going to lower the shoulder. He's close, real close. It's going to depend on the spot entirely, Marking and they're saying right first down. Yep, he needed to. He got to. So athletic big kid. I mean, Abe Delano's tall enough. If he gets up to the line of scrimmage, he's got to fall forward, carry that football with him, and hold on to it. He's going to get two yards. So 
good play call there. Went with the safe two yards and got it. Eric Becker on that Sonora sideline saying, why are we not measuring this? He is not happy. As that play really was right at the it stick. It was there. I mean, 30, 31 was the marker, and it was right on top. I mean, yeah, you're talking three, four inches either way and determines that. First down and 10 now. The clock spinning near the three-minute mark. Time is not on the side of the Tenora Rams here, and they'll take their time. It'll be McConnell with it. Tenora will swarm and stop him after a gain of a couple. Burn their first time out, and yeah. I think we're going to see this exact thing on the next two plays here. Yep. So Tenora takes their first time out of the second half. We'll take it with them. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney at law timeout. It's Ayersville 8, Tenora 7. We got about uh, 2.54 to go here in this uh, ball game. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field. Josh Bush, Brent Rott with you, the DC TV sports crew here tonight. Uh, 2.54 to go in the ball game, and uh, Tenora burning their first time out to try and stop this clock a little bit, uh, Brent, uh, as Ayersville, uh, you know, again, play after play, you can you can chunk off quite a bit of clock here. For sure. a, a first down would be uh, almost yeah, would, doomsday would for Tenora. Would be about it, for sure, yeah. So they'll give it second man through as Delano. And he'll be wrapped up and stopped. And Tenora will burn their second time out. We'll keep it here. Yeah, Delano definitely went forward, so got a couple yards there. But, you know, the point of that whole thing was to burn another time out. We're going to see a very similar play yeah. on this play here and get them wipe out all the Tenora timeouts. Now, if you're in, in these huddles here, Brent, one of the things you've got to be telling these guys is listen no penalties hold on to the football <laughs> hold on to the football um you know if you're tenora here you want to swarm you know what's coming yeah swarm the swarm the football and knock it out yeah they're saying the exact same thing both coaches are saying play disciplined football here but if you're the defense in tenora you're thinking knock that ball loose we need that ball back can save that timeout if you're airsville get to the ground <laughs> and do not lose that football it's going to be an interesting play you know, if you if, if you start to look ahead here, assuming we get a run, as we've seen for a couple yards, it's going to be fourth down and short. I mean, where you're at on the field, you would have to feel like you're going to send your offense out there to try to close the game out. Sure. So this the first is time, maybe, it, it, very that, that well maybe two-down territory for Ayersville. They could surprise people and throw the ball here. It's not outside of a possibility. Everybody in the world is thinking run here. They know if they get the first down, that might be game. I think I'd keep an eye on it. So you're going to have a stacked box here. We only got two receiver run. split, so yeah, this is looking like a run. So you got ISO coverage on those two receivers. That's nine guys in the box for the Tenora defense. Yep. It'll be the second man through. Even. Not much there. And you got to believe Tenora will burn their final timeout. So as we predicted, their sets up about, what, fourth and three or fourth and four? And it's a Kristen Stanton attorney at law timeout. Five. We'll take it back with a big fourth down coming up next here on DC TV Sports. All right, it's going to come down to this fourth down here, 2.37 to go in the ball game. It is a fourth down and five at the 25-yard line for the Ayersville offense. Brent, Tenora just burnt their final timeout. If uh, Ayersville could get a first down here, they will be able to run this clock out yeah. and uh, take home the the, uh, ri the uh, River Bowl victory for sure. bell for a second year in a row. For five yards in the Ayersville Pilots would pretty much mean the game where if Tenora can get that stop, they would get the ball back with roughly two and a half minutes. No timeouts would be able to have a shot to drive down the field. So 
Ayersville will spread it out a little bit here. Tenora with a five-man front. They're going to throw it on fourth down. It'll be knocked out of the hands of uh, oh the intended receiver. And I'll tell you what, I believe that was Owen Ackerman who came in there yep. for Tenora and a huge defensive play for Owen Ackerman. And it'll be a turnover on downs. you got to love that play call. Aggressive play call go out there. You know, you're obviously in a passing situation, but... He let Lucas Fishball, Coach Mickey let Lucas Fishball put it back and put a good ball on Owen Ackerman's hand got in there. Uh, it's the difference so far in this game as we're at two and a half minutes. Uh, Tenora getting the ball here, looking to go well, 76 yards. So they'll have it first down and 10 at their own 24-yard line. They are out of timeouts here. They are a team that could kick a field goal if they get into range as well. Absolutely. Bishop just missed that uh, attempt yep. earlier. Back to pass is Graziani. He's going to come down the uh, near sideline, and he'll just overshoot his intended receiver. He was looking for Bishop, uh, who kind of stopped, I think, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little think, bit of a stutter. I think uh, Graziani thought maybe he was going to continue down yep. that sideline, and the pass will go over his head and fall incomplete second and ten. Yeah, nothing wrong with taking that chance. We're going to see the ball in the air constantly here on this uh, possession, so you know they're going to have to play with the sticks and get the ten yards at, at a pop, but... Um, you're going to see some deep shots, and you saw one there on the first first play of the drive. So. Clock stops, 2.26 to go in the ballgame. Rams break the huddle, 10 seconds on the play clock. They're going to have to kind of hurry a little bit here. They'll have a five-receiver set, trips to the left of Graziani, and he'll look that way. Pressure comes. He rolls to his left. He's going to fire down the left Hash mark, uh, contact, yeah, will little, they call it? He was looking for Ackerman. Definitely looked incidental. I mean, you look like both guys kind of ran into each other a little bit there. So, yeah, I definitely wouldn't have been surprised if a flag came out there, but it's not one that necessarily is going to just draw one automatically. So, you know, the officials have done a good job tonight of letting these kids play. And, yeah. I mean, a note, and you don't want to see an adjustment late. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to see. You uh, just want consistency till the end. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to see them dialing in that tic-tac, you know, that getting picky at what the you, end of a game. What do you think about Graziani putting it down and running here? Well, if he gets the first down, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, I, th I think it's not a bad idea if he sees space and knows he can get there. So, Ayers will just put three linemen down and all their defensive backs are playing off. He's going to throw to the sideline. It'll be caught out across the 30 near the 35 as that was Grady Gusweiler with it. It's a game of about, what, about six? Going to be I think we're going to give him nine. Nine? Is that much? So it'll be a fourth down now, maybe eight on the care, on the uh, reception, out to the 32-yard line. Here's your ball game, folks. Fourth down and two for this Tenor offense at their own 32-yard line. Five receivers, and Ayersville will bring blitz. He's got all kinds of pressure coming. He's got to get rid of the football. He reverses field back the other way. Still running, still looking for it. He's going to tuck it down and go. He's going to have the first down and a little bit more. Stays in bounds. It'll go out across the 42-yard line. I tell you what, to get 10 yards, and he got 10 yards there. I think he ran about 65 Yeah, to get 10. Heck of a run not given up. And now, you know, Shockingly, you don't see a hold on the play there. You know, time is not of the essence here for yeah, Tenora. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not in desperation mode, but it's definitely, you know, two minutes to go. Fourth down, that was, I mean, that was the play. They stay alive. It seems like this has been the game where every team, when they've been right on the brink of, uh, they, this could be the backbreaker sure. play, the other team seems to step up and keep everybody breathing. So Here's the Laburna timeout here. We'll keep it here. Um, Obviously a great spot to take a timeout. For, for sure. Graziani's out of bounds. Yeah. Clock has stopped yeah. already. Burn your timeout. Reset your defense I mean, your here. Your defenders are running around too there, so get everybody reset. You know, I don't think they want to shut off the thought process of that. That quarterback is going to utilize his legs throughout this drive. So, you and know, Graziani it, can run the football yeah, very, very well. he absolutely can. And, and he's, a, he's a smart football player, and when he sees things break down, he, do, he loves to take the shot quick, and if he doesn't get a good read, He's just comfortable getting that five, six, seven yards. Now he's going to be playing a little bit more at the sideline. So, you know, I, I fully expect if he doesn't see things early on, he's going to tuck it and try to keep the ball moving forward. So first down and 10 out the 41-yard line. And Graziani back to pass again. No rush here, just the three down linemen. And now he'll have a little bit of pressure. He's going to get it away, and it'll be... What a catch. I think he's going to be out of bounds. I call that a catch. Now they're going to give him the catch into... Ayersville territory. Well, it looked, again, sideline. Yeah, that's... You know, our, our angle was a little tough there, but it, it almost looked like his foot was on the white, but they're going to say it was a catch across the 50 down to the 43-yard line of 
Ayersville. Yeah, I saw the official immediately mark a catch, so I know we're a little bit of an angle. Couldn't quite see. It looked like he may have had a toe out there, but official right on top of it. Called That's it a why catch. they're closer. That's right. Five receiver is set again for Graziani back to pass. Just a three-man rush. He'll go across the middle. He's got a wide-open receiver, and it's hauled in by Carter Gilliam, who's had a couple of big catches here tonight, and that one is a none bigger than that one right there. That's a huge catch. Uh, you know, gain of about 25 there, but that's got him right into field goal range, and you still got about a buck 40 on the clock. Inside our Stamball Jewelers red zone, and Graziani will spike it to stop the clock there. And you can see these these players are gassed. Yeah, they, have, they definitely are both sides for sure. So, well, Tenora's put a little drive together here. It started back at their own 24-yard line. They're had now... The, the inside the Stamball Jewelers red zone at the Ayersville 17. Had the big fourth down play there to get the first down and then the quick pass along the sidelines to Gus Weiler and then that big play there has set him up where, you know, you're inside the red zone already. You got a buck 41, no timeouts, but you got plenty of time now as you move the ball down the field. Minute 41, snap comes. Graziani will tuck it down and run. He can stay in the middle of the field here. He'll be hit inside the five. He spins near the goal line. It'll be a first down run and the uh, Tenora's going to be quick to the line, yeah, but about they got a minute and a half here. They 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 need to hurry, but they've got time. Yeah, you've got time here. First down and goal now at the two. Clock spinning, and I believe Ayersville's going to burn yeah, a timeout. Yeah, you kind of felt like that's exactly what was going to happen. As soon as they got up, they were going to let as much time trickle off and then call their timeout. You're at first and goal at the two-yard line, so Dominic Graziani on this possession just has made play after play after play through the air and with his feet and has put Tenora right in position to where you want to be, get that second score. Sure. It's probably going to be the one that wins it. So we got a minute 26 to go here. A drive that started back on the Tenora 24-yard line. Brent, you mentioned yep. Dominic Graziani, what he's been able to do here. He's made a couple of clutch throws. He's tucked it down and ran it and smart to get himself out of bounds and stop the clock. Uh, he's played a heck of a football game, but this drive in particular has been huge for Dominic Graziani. He's been tremendous throughout the game, you know, leading the team, leading the game and rushing. He's also thrown the ball fairly well. He's been a little more efficient than we saw him last week. So um, has played a really good fundamentally sound game, has not made a lot of mistakes, has utilized his legs when he's needed to. And now, you know, we're sticking with inside a minute and a half to go right on the doorstep mm -hmm. of punching it in, trailing by one. Remember, this game is not tied. It's 8-7. And, and let's be realistic here. A minute 30 to go. First and goal to two. The playbook's a little bit more open here because you don't gonna need a big run. run. You're, You're going to see a big run. run. I wouldn't be shocked if you see three straight runs. Gus Weiler. Or no, but it'll be Graziani. He'll just dive forward. He didn't get in. He got hit and dropped right at the goal line or right at the line of scrimmage. Tenora will go right back to this it. This is where you give it to the big kid. Four. Oh, they'll, oh, they fumbled the snap. They did fumble the snap. We'll see what happens here. We got Ayersville players pointing that way. They're saying it's here. They're no, saying he was we, down. So the ball has not moved. It's still sitting. Well, it's about the what? Still one and a half yard yeah, line. Yeah, one and a half yard line. So third down. So again, I think with just inside a minute, you're still going to see a run play here. 56 seconds to go in the ball game. Graziani, low snap again. It'll be picked up. Oh. And there's there all timeout. kinds of whistles. I think we had an Ayersville timeout. And we'll see the oh, we officials here. are looking to sort this one out here. Got a dead ball off sides. Wow. Did somebody get their hand on the ball there? I wonder, because that snap went straight to the ground. Could be. And rolled. Yeah. I wonder if there was a hand that hit the top of the football there. So half the distance to the goal stays third down. That's really a foot penalty. So About one foot, maybe two feet. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Not much there. Yeah. It was at the two and a half, so it'll be at the one and the quarter. Yeah, I mean, on a bad snap, you'll take it, though. <laughs> you'll sure. take that there was an offside there. So the ball will be placed. With 50, looks like we're at 5 0, 50 seconds. So, yeah, just right uh, at the and one and a half, just over the one-yard line. And for Tenora there, that stops the clock. That's huge. They can huddle up and, yeah. and not have to go quickly here. Graziani's going to throw it. He's back to pass. Nowhere to go. Pressure comes. He tucks it down. He'll go across the goal line, and he'll get a Premier Bank touchdown. It's a two-yard touchdown run for Dominic Graziani. And Tenora will score with 43 seconds left to go. Big time run. Graziani drops back to make a pass there. 
surprising me a little bit. I, I kind of thought they'd stick heavy with the run there, but uh, went back to pass, and again, quick read was broken down. He saw a little bit of daylight and was able to get enough to get into the end zone. So a two-yard, officially a two-yard touchdown run for Graziani Bishop on for the point after, and it will be good. So Tenora, you said it, Brent, first team to score two. Am I, I mean, I'm, there's still 43 seconds, but one, lot time, can happen. one time out, two for Ayersville. So, you know, it's, it's going to come down to Lucas Fish, Paul, those playmakers on offense. If they're able to block and set up, they're going to get some pass plays out here, um, you know. We'll it's, see what happens. It definitely gets an exciting game. So, again, you like defense. If you love offense, maybe you're a little disappointed, but everybody loves a good close game, especially in a rivalry game. So this one's setting up really, really nice for a, a tremendous ending. 14-8 to eight for the Rams now leading it. Uh, let's get our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. It went 11 plays, a minute 50 off the clock, aided by that penalty to kind of stop things a little bit. 11 plays, a minute 50, 76 yards, capped off by a two-yard touchdown run by Dominic Graziani. The point after was good. Tenor leads it by a, uh, by a score of 14 to 8. Our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary and I can imagine here Bishop's probably just going to boot this one. Yeah. A little squibber down Broadway. Squib and it. Um, you know, if you're Ayersville, you're trying to scoop the ball up, hold on to the football, get a few yards, fall down, let's go, let's One play. timeout. One timeout, so, you know. What kind of a, what's the longest pass play that Ayersville's had tonight? 25 yards to Ray Wolfram, I believe. Early on in the game. It was, the one, it was really the first big play of the game. So here we go. The ensuing kickoff will be booted high, end over end kick. They think they were trying to maybe... Sneak that one over top of their head. And Ray Wolfram will fake the... Looked like he was yeah, trying to yeah. fake him I, out with and, a little bit of a lateral there. You know but what? That's, that's I mean, not a terrible idea. Maybe you might have fooled me a little bit too on that. So <laughs> I was ready for the throwback to come across the field. But So um, Ayersville comes out here. 35 seconds to go. They'll have it first down and 10. And about the 25, 26-yard line. 25. 26. 26. Good call. Something like that. Yeah, 25. So they'll spot it right at the 25-yard line here. They've got one timeout, so. You know, still middle of the field, still in play. You get some clock stoppages on chains moving, so there's still some options here. So 35 seconds, fish ball back in shotgun formation, and he's looking to throw. They'll blow, they'll blow it dead. Trying to see. We've got a penalty marker. Uh, 12, came in from 12 men. Came in from the back, Judge. Did they have 12? Somebody had 12, maybe. I can't count that high. Yep, yeah, I think you're right. They're jogging a guy off on the defensive side. Yeah, uh, I didn't count those guys. Just typically when you see it dropped on the snap back there, that's what you're dealing with. Yep, so they broke the huddle with 12 men, and yep. well, that'll give Ayersville a free five yards. Out to the 30, so first and five now. Not that that's necessarily sure. matters too much. And the pass will be picked off on the far sideline. <laughs> Trying to see who that was. I believe it was Gilliam, Carter Gilliam, who has Correct. had an absolutely yeah, he's played, played a pretty special game tonight. Has Big had plays. some huge. Huge plays on both sides of the football tonight. Carter yep. Gilliam with the interception, and that'll be the first turnover of the night for the Ayersville Pilots. And, and there's never, you know, Brent, it's cliche, right? Yeah. There's never a great time for a turnover. No. But, but uh, when you're trying to maybe get an opportunity to, to, to get down the field, and it's about as bad of a time as you could find. 30 yeah. seconds to go here, and obviously Tenora will just put a knee on it and – we got a flag on that. Well, we got a penalty marker. You jinxed that one. Man, I tell you what. <laughs> we were we, we were cruising with no flags. We've had about 12 yeah, since False then. start against Tenora. So it'll back him up five yards. I mean, really just kind of delaying the inevitable here. Ayersville can stop, stop the clock, the clock one time. Timeout. You're going to have to see two knees here yeah. more than likely. But and then that's if Coach Mickey takes that timeout. Sure. I mean, you know. You, you always you, have the snap to deal with, so yeah, the game is still sure. alive. I would full on one hundred percent, one hundred percent. You know, and we've seen some snap issues tonight. So, yeah, you're not wrong about that. Tenora's not been clean with snapping no. the football. 
So 27 seconds to go here. It's been a ball game, Brent. It's been that's a great for sure. game. You know, you, you get a big time contest like this, two schools that definitely, you know, look forward to playing each other in every sport sure. every year. So um, I, it's always a bonus when these are good, hard, hard fought, close games. And we got that again tonight. Make sure you join us coming up in the post game. We'll be selecting a Steichman Automotive Group player of the game. Got a tough decision to make tonight, my friend. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be easy. And no timeout. Graziani will put a knee on it. And I believe. I believe that's how this one's yeah, going to end. Gonna do it. The, fifth, the uh, 48th edition of the River Bowl at Victory Bell will go back to Tenora as the Rams are a winner here tonight by a final score of 14 to 8. Brunswick uh, Eye and Contact Leonard Center postgame show is next. Welcome back to Ayersville High School, Craig McCord Field. Uh, Tenori winner tonight by a final score of 14 to 8. Brent, uh, as we roll on our Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show, let's get a look at some of those final statistical numbers here tonight. Look, uh, for the Ayersville Pilots, uh, offensively uh, running the football, Torian Knieven uh, led the team in carries with 21 and 48 yards as well. Abe Delano carried the ball five times for 21 yards. And Garrett McConnell had five carries for 27 yards through the air. Ray Wolfram had a touchdown catch in his three catches, uh, 49 yards total. Abe Delano had two catches for five yards. And through the air, Lucas Fishpaul tonight had a big touchdown pass there early in the third quarter, um, the interception late, but uh, passed for a total of 54 yards on the game. Total yardage for Ayersville tonight was... 156 yards, so uh, pretty evenly uh, mixed up with 90 yards in the second half, 59 in the first. So, um, Over on the Tenor side, Grady Gusweiler paced uh, carries right actually neck and neck with Don Graziani. Gusweiler had 49 yards tonight on 11 carries. Joey Geisinger had five carries for 19 yards. Don Graziani, 77 yards, negated a little bit there, lost 10 yards on the back-to-back -back knees sure. to end the game. 77 yards rushing for him. Carter Gilliam a carry for seven yards. Uh, receiving, you know, on the on the pass catching side a little bit here out of uh, Tenora. Caden Radzik, three catches for 24 yards. Owen Ackerman, two catches, 15. Jacob Bishop, a catch for five yards. Uh, Grady Gusweiler, effective there on that last drive, had four catches for 43 yards. Uh, Braden Rostai, three catches, 23 yards. And Carter Gilliam, a huge 25-yard catch reception for uh, Dom Graziani. Uh, no touchdowns to the year, but had 135 passing yards and played pretty mistake-free football for the for, for the most part today. And two rushing touchdowns. Two rushing touchdowns. Our final stats here tonight in a 14 to eight Tenora win. We're going to take another timeout on our Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center post-game show. We'll come back. We'll uh, try to get some comments from uh, Eric Becker, and we'll roll on from to, from Ayersville tonight. Tenora winner 14 to eight. We're back with that more after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field. 48th meeting between these two teams goes the way of the Tenor Rams here tonight by a final score of 14 to 8. Let's recap your scoring here tonight. Tenora struck first, not until the second quarter. Dominic Graziani had a five yard touchdown run, uh, put the Rams up uh, after the point after seven to nothing. Uh, third quarter, Ayersville would get on the uh, board. Six and a half to go in the third quarter as uh, Lucas Fishball found Ray Wolfram on a 15-yard touchdown pass. Gabe, De or excuse me, Abe Delano uh, on that two-point conversion, and Ayersville went up eight to seven. And then it was Dominic Graziani doing a lot on that final drive for uh, Tenora with 43 seconds to go. He gets a two-yard touchdown run. The point after was good, and that brings us to our final score here tonight, 14 to eight. For Tenora, they'll improve to four and three, three and one in the Green Meadows Conference. And now uh, sitting 
right there with a, a host of other teams as uh, with one loss in the league for Ayersville. They'll fall to 5-2, and two, now 3-1 and one also in the Green Meadows Conference for head coach Eric Becker. And I believe, trying to see if we have been able to find him, the Tenora Rams are celebrating a victory here tonight with the uh, victory bell. They've now won 15 of the last 17 meetings in this River Bowl, and uh, that victory bell is uh, so important to both of these teams uh, here tonight. And I believe Brent is uh, looking like he's perhaps going to have an opportunity here. So, all right, uh, we're going to send it over to Brent Routon, who is standing by with the victorious head coach, Eric Becker. Give me something, Will. Good to go? All right, here live with Coach Becker after the game. I just want to talk, great hard-fought win, big-time rivalry game out here. How's it feel to get this one knocked out and move on um, and continue on with the season? You know, that's, I told Logan, you know, this this game the last probably six years has been a one-score, two-score defensive battle. Very few offensive yards. you got to take advantage of the turnovers. you got to be able to score when you got a good opportunity. We kind of, they kind of overloaded the, Field goal going into halftime, put some pressure. The kids were a little down on that. Uh, you know, this is for the community. You can yeah. see it right here. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's special. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Uh, talk about your defense tonight. You guys have played phenomenal, only gave up one score. Um, just talk about how prepared they were and how this game rolled out. You know, outside of a couple big plays, one sustained drive I think was given up yep. against us. Yep. Uh, you know, it's kind of been our mentality. You know, it was last week. Ben, don't break. They got down yes. the red zone a couple times and, you know, play hard football. Nobody's going to score. You get down in there, it's hard to score. And with those athletes we have, it's hard It's hard getting a couple yards. Absolutely is. We talked a lot about last week against Wayne Trace this week. The Ben, but don't break defense is impressive again tonight. Talk about your quarterback play. A lot of big plays, especially there on the, on the final drive, big fourth down run. Um, just talk about uh, number five and how Dominic played tonight. You know, he started off that series, kind of scared me a little yes. bit. Um, he thought he had to get it all in one play, and thankfully, you know, we got a chance to talk to him, calmed him down, got him in the spot, and, you know, at the end of the day, the kid's an athlete. Yep. He, he is not afraid to tuck the ball and run. I think he showed it time and time out. I mean, all the way back to Wayne Trace last year, he wasn't even a starter. He just went in for a couple plays. You don't respect him and keep contained. He, he's he's going to wiggle his way out of there and break off a big game. No, yeah, no doubt. Uh, great job tonight. Just want to congratulate you and say good job. And moving on to next week, sir. feeling good. Momentum. All right, guys. All right, uh, Brent, thanks. Uh, victorious head coach Eric Becker and these Tenora Rams who uh, will uh, get that victory bell back as they uh, take this 48th meeting in the River Bowl by a final score of 14-8 to eight to improve to 4-3 and three on the season and, uh, again, put themselves uh, still in the race for a Green Meadows Conference title, now 3-1 and one in the league as Ayersville also 3-1, and one, of course, all chasing Antwerp as well. Again, our final score tonight, 14-8. to eight. Our uh, Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show rolls on. When we come back, we'll be uh, talking uh, candidates for our Steichman Automotive Group Player of the Game. That is next right here on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville High School as El Tenora kind of uh, ruined it here for uh, Ayersville. But uh, I think uh, the biggest thing you could take away from this, this was a hard-fought game that none of these young men can be uh, disappointed in because they played their hearts out. And uh, Tenora able to come through with the victory there on that last uh, that last drive of the game. And uh, just kind of taking a couple of looks at look at a couple of scores here from around the area. Elida now on top of Defiance, uh, 19 to 18. That's in the fourth Ooh. quarter. Uh, Antwerp leading Wayne Trace, 30 to 21. How about Fairview uh, leading Edgerton tonight, 44 to 35. That game's in the fourth quarter. Um, Hicksville trails Paulding, 36 to 21. Um, let's see. Final score from Liberty Center. I don't know. Patrick Henry, 62. 
to zero. You're kidding. A pair of undefeated teams, and it goes 62 to zero. So wow. just a couple of uh, finals and uh, some scores uh, late in the game there. But uh, uh, Brent, uh, you heard Coach Becker, a very uh, an emotional Man. Coach Becker uh, here uh, with that victory, and for him, it's his first. Uh, it's his first River Bowl as a head yeah. coach, and uh, to get the victory here tonight, it's something special. And he, he mentioned it, not just for these kids and for these players, not just for the school, but for the community yep. as a whole. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Coach Becker, yeah, just I think he's more, you feel that sense of relief to get this one knocked out. They knew it was going to be a hard, a tough game, as it always is, so you got to feel elated to get the win, especially a comeback win, scoring a touchdown inside a minute to go to get the win. So lots of emotions, but like he said down there, and like you just said, the community. This is for the. This is for the fans. This is for the the parents, the grandparents, everybody involved. You know, you only get so many of these. So when you get an opportunity to come back and get a big comeback win, you love it. Well, for Ayersville, uh, obviously their first league loss. Uh, nothing. You know, they're still in the mix. Sure. Uh, there they'll go and uh, they'll be back here at home next week against Paulding. So yep. uh, we'll see what they can do. That's a Paulding team that's much improved uh, playing this year. Playing really well. good football. And uh, Tenora will get their crack next week at Antwerp. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's the big one uh, for everybody this year. But Tenora gets the leg up, you know, and, and when, when you get the head-to-head -head against Ayersville, it's going to help coming down. So big win, and, boy, you're right, Antwerp next week. That is on the a road. test. On the road at Antwerp. Uh, well, let's uh, look at some uh, candidates for our Stegman <laughs> Automotive Group Player of the Game. Uh, let's start uh, Ayersville not on the winning side here tonight, but let's talk about a couple of guys that uh, could be in the contention here for uh, Player of the Game on that side of the football. I love Abe, Abe Delano and how he played tonight. Not necessarily going to wow you with stats, but the big two-point conversion down here seemed like every time he touched the ball and they needed two or three yards, he would be the guy to pick it up. They like to run him in that wildcat formation, and it definitely fits. Um Torian can even as well running the football. I mean, offensively they didn't put have a ton of output, but um, Ray Ray Wolfram I think is the big one. Three well, catches, touchdown, had 49 yards. How about big Brady plays. Clark? Brady Clark on especially on defense, my lord, hitting uh, had some monster hits today. Well, let's uh, flip it over. Ayersville, uh, you and I haven't even had a chance to talk where we're going with this, but uh, yeah, this is tough. <laughs> talk. I mean, this is really uh, a tough one here tonight. Uh, couple of guys that stood out for you on that side of the football. Uh, I mean, talking for, for uh, Dominic I, uh, Graziani, I think he's a guy who's going to be in play almost every single week. Mm -hmm. But um, he, he put that team on his back there at the end of the game. So led the team in rushing, obviously had a pretty consistent uh, passing game today. Had two, had both touchdowns. Sure. I think that's huge. I'm, I'm going to throw Carter Gilliam's C name out there. Carter and, Gilliam seems uh, to be the one. Obviously, he had that interception yeah. there at the end of the game. Um, but a couple of big receptions there to keep drives alive too yeah it made a big play on defense made a couple big plays on offense he had the big reception like you said kind of really was not the one that sealed that victory but kept them alive and really pushed the ball down the field so tremendous play for him um played really good owen ackerman on defense had three or four knockouts uh, you know knocked the ball down it, uh Braden Rastai had had three big catches i mean they had a lot of guys any of those linebackers any game probably in the mix sure. uh so what are you thinking it's a tough one. It's a it's a real tough one. I I, I want to say Carter Gilliam. I, I would tonight. probably lean on Carter Gilliam. I, I I think that falls in the bucket of we probably could give it to Dominic Graziani every game. And Carter Gilliam played a tremendous game. Yeah. You know, stuck out like a sore thumb. And I think when you do that, and it's not necessarily all in the stat book, that tells you how good of a game he really played. All right, Carter Gilliam, a uh, senior for this Tenora Ram squad, will be our Steichman Automotive Group Player of the Game. We're going to set him up with a free pizza from that Petroni's sounds Pizza. Phenomenal right and now. And a uh, nice certificate there from uh, Steichman right. Automotive Group. So congratulations sure. to. Uh, Carter Gilliam, uh, Tenora Sr., will be our player of the game here tonight from Steichman Automotive Group. Uh, Brent, uh, wow, what a night here tonight. Uh, nothing flashy as far as score-wise, but uh, a huge battle here. As you know, this uh, game is going to be every year. Yeah, and, and I think you like uh, what you saw from Tenora. You also like what you saw from Ayersville. Ayersville, a team with one loss. We were here for their only loss, and it wasn't that close sure. of a game. Um, tonight, you saw a team that came out, you know, hungry to play and uh you know did tremendously well it was just too much watch out for that court over there um it's just too much uh of tenora and, and the late plays um you know dominic graziani making some enormously sure. big plays and that's really what the difference in the game was so overall tremendous performance on both sides it's so impressed with how airsville came out in the second half made the adjustments sure. drove right down the field and scored but like coach becker said it was the only sustained drive they had all yeah. night 
I only want to say a big thanks to Rafael Menriquez and everybody here at Ayersville High School. They are, of course, giving us uh, tremendous uh, hospitality as they do yep. each and every week. We appreciate that. Our entire production team, uh, Jeff, John, Will, uh, Tim, Zeke. Uh, everybody. I hope I'm not Miss Sarah's over there uh, working a, a, a promo on her, tent for On her anniversary. On her anniversary. Slaving away out here, yep. So uh, big thanks to our entire production team. For Brent Routon, this is Josh Bush saying goodnight from Ayersville where the Tenor Rams win the 48th meeting in the River Bowl by a final score of 14-8. to eight. Join us next week. We'll be back at Defiance as the Bulldogs have their final home game of the season as they entertain the Lima Bath Wildcats. You've been watching high school football tonight here on DC TV Sports. Good night, everybody.